The one in the mirror is my biggest fall. Ain't gonna act like it's difficult. I gotta get right, cause the time ain't gon' slow. Gotta do as it is written, though. Man, I thank the Lord if you didn't know. He saved my life. Why go on? I done made some mistakes, ain't no bottom And it pours when it rains, hope it washed off the stains. They still look at me strange for the outcome. Yeah. How come he chose me to walk up this mountain? And all of the blessings and mercies I've seen on this journey, I never forgot one. Aye. And all of a sudden, Aye. and this what it was, and I'm seeing the suffering, I'm sick to my stomach. Betrayed him for nothing, invited the judgment, he raining no curses on dirty as dust. Now how can I function? I'm knowing the life that I live could lead to destruction. The kingdom is coming. I'm not a bad individual. I just made some mistakes on my way down the road. Drop the old man like a give and go. The one in the mirror is my biggest fall. Ain't gonna act like it's difficult. I gotta get right cause the time ain't gonna slow. Gotta do as it is written though. Man, I thank the Lord if you didn't know. He saved my life.
Man, if you still asleep after all this and you can't see what's going on in this world, you a fool. And I'ma tell you to your face, you's a fool. Open your eyes and see. They don't love us, no, they don't love us. They don't love us, no, they don't love us. They don't love us, no, they don't love us. They don't love us. Somebody tell them, wake up, wake up, wake up. Somebody tell him, Open your mind to the bigger picture, change your mind frame A thousand words in his image, ain't no mind games Big facts my testimony, the spirit resting on me Wrestle with angels, but got Satan trying to press up on me Cotton field in my view, I'm out here picking for free The five food, but ain't no chitlins for me Make it my mission to be that holy seed Cause all they see is a nigga Raw priest, all I need is a sensor This truth can not all be filled Praise it to the Most High, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom Most High in Christ, bless Yes, Welcome to another edition sir. of Escaping the Plantation 2.0. I'm your host, Captain Get a Light. To my right, Officer Jose. To my left, Officer Zorai. And to my far left, Officer John. All praise to the Most High. Listen, we got a jam packed show for y'all today. Let's pull up that title real quick, man. Let's show them what the thumbnail is. Jewish people want to replace us while black Christians want to erase us. Mm. Bars. So. You got one set of people who are claiming to be us and want to replace us. Then you got the people who are our people who are actually the people that's trying to replace them. And they want to erase us. What's going on here? What is going on on the earth today? That God set up his chosen people, his prophets, to go out and teach his people who they are in the last days. And they're met with ridicule. AK-47s. Crowballs, hostility, flashing guns. But then the same at the same time, they okay with this man being a Jew. Right. Right. And there's no historical other than them saying they Jews, there's no biblical proof. There's no archaeological proof. There's no historical proof. You can't we still we still we ask them, show us you the Jew. And they just start doing talking points. Well, you know, we went through the Holocaust. Okay, show me you're a Jew. They can't do it. All right, so we're going to keep that energy going, man. The Jews want to replace us, and black Christians want to erase us. I'll pray the most high. Go ahead and uh, read that first scripture real quick. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 71 and verse 2. Read yeah. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Read. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. So we ask the Lord to deliver us in his righteousness and cause us to escape. Escape what? The plantation because that's what we own. I know some of y'all just you feel what I feel. You feel the plantation and them bones and them knees. Right. That back. You like, ah. <laughs> Sheesh, I've been on the plantation all day. Hey, but we break away from the plantation to come and edify the nation of Israel and bring you the latest in the world what's going on regarding our people, what's going on regarding the evils that's going on in this planet. All right? So, with that being said, go ahead. You know what it, you know what it is? Drop that thing. The righteous rant of the day. Well, I really didn't have a righteous rant plan, but as I was thinking, I was thinking about um, Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. Deion Sanders um, took a job at the University of Colorado. He's going to make $5 million a year. Right. And he was at a historically black college uh, here in Jackson, Mississippi, Jackson State University. We've been blitzing the hell out of him lately. <laughs> um, but he decided to leave the historically black college and move on to a, um, a white college. Boulder, Colorado, if you've ever been there, it ain't nothing but white folks and weed smoke. That's all you're going to see is mm -hmm. white people and weed smoke in the air, okay? You been to Boulder before? No, sir. It's just, well, it's Whiteville. Right. All right? So it's Edomiteville for sure. Edomite heaven. So with that being said, a lot of a lot of black people are mad. I'm on the fence. And this is why I'm on the fence. One In one aspect, I see why he did what he did. Because black folk don't treat you right. 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 
True. I'm just being real. Like you do stuff for black people, and they never satisfied. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you deal with any, if you deal with brothers and sisters on your job, or in the world, your family, you see how our people are. Our people lack integrity. Our people just don't know how to deal. Even the so-called professional of our people with right. the degrees, right? They niggas. I hate to say, <laughs> I hate to say it. It's the truth. Yeah, what it a lot of our people niggas. So a lot of people, a lot of a lot of people are angry at Deion Sanders for making. He told them that he was going to leave, possibly, right. to, to pursue a bigger job. And black folks is mad about it. But how does this translate into the Bible? So, understand, Esau run this world, bro. The Bible says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And a lot of times, black celebrities have not seen truly what it means to be detached from their master. So they have an infinity for him. They have a love for him. And guess where they come from? Them sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Them Greekish fashions. Yeah. That blinds the eyes of our people to say, we can't do it by ourselves. We need mass. You understand what I'm saying? Give me uh, first Maccabee 111 real yes, quick. Yes, sir. So I wasn't going to do a righteous rant today on this. I was going to have a whole show be a righteous rant, but I just want to touch on it because I know a lot of black folks is worried about it and thinking about it. Let me show you what the Bible says about this. Stop putting your stock in celebrities. They're going to let you down. If you think that a, a, a NFL coach or ex-football player or a rapper or an entertainer is going to change your community, they're not going to do it. If you think they're loyal to your community, they not, they're not. Okay, especially when it comes to sports. Let me show you the spirit. Give me that. The book of First Maccabees, chapter 1 and verse 11. Go ahead. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men. Go ahead. Who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. Read. That are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Go ahead. So this device pleased them well. Read. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king, who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. That's what our people want. They want a license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. They want to be in these power five conferences and all that stuff like that. They want to make the big dollars, the big bucks. Now, do I believe in elevating yourself? In any type of whatever you're in, yeah. But do I believe that you should elevate yourself at the cost and the hurt, the heartache for your own people? I don't believe in that. But this is Greekish fashions we're talking about. And when you're involved in these Greekish fashions, hey, it's a doggy dog world. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gonna hey, it's, it's about me and my family elevating the hell with y'all Negroes. Right. It's down there in Jackson shooting folks and stuff. Yeah. He said that in this little interview. Yeah, thought, yeah. Talking about the crime. He said, well, you know, I'm glad to be somewhere where there ain't no crime. Right. You know what I'm saying, and, and he ain't lying. <laughs> Jackson is full of crime, but he don't have the, the he don't have the the spiritual capabilities to go out and edify the people, because he can't go out there and say we the Jews, because then all his Jewish constituents gonna disown him mm-hmm. and his agent and all them folks. They are gonna disown him. All the the NFL uh, Hall of Fame and all that stuff like that. They'll find a way to slander him and take his coat from him and his rings. They'll right. do it. Yeah. They did it to Reggie Bush. Find yeah, way, yeah. They took Reggie Bush Heisman Trophy from him. They ain't give a damn. You understand? That's how these folks are. You understand? So when you make a covenant with the heathen and you ask to have permission to do license uh, to do his ways and his customs and his ordinances, what happens next? Keep reading. Verse 14. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem according to the customs of the heathen. Now go ahead. And made themselves uncircumcised. You hear that? And you make yourself uncircumcised. When you join yourself to the heathen, you become uncircumcised, brothers. Go ahead. And forsook the Holy Covenant. And you forsake your people. Because remember, the Holy Covenant is the covenant between us and God. But one of those covenants was to love your neighbor as yourself. We forget about that. When it comes to money, when it comes to fame, when it comes to prestige, we forget about loving your neighbor as yourself. Now, could you have big dollars and big money and still love your neighbor as yourself? Absolutely you can. There is a possibility you could do that. But you can't do it without this Bible. I'm sorry, you can't do it. Dion had everybody tricked. Everybody thought he was here for black folk. Mm-hmm. No, nah, black folks was a stepping stone for him. Right. right. But it was because of what we read right here. His heart has become uncircumcised. Go ahead. And joined themselves to the heathen mm. and were sold to do mischief. And now they're going to have him cooning. <laughs> He's going to be cooning up there in cold air, Colorado. I'm just telling you, that's just, I mean, this is just the nature of things. This is how this world is set up. And if you don't know who you are and you're not repentant, or trying to repent, 
then you're going to always get caught up in these things. You brothers and sisters in Jackson, Mississippi, that continue to try to put your stock in celebrities. Y'all think y'all had a golden ticket with Deion Sanders being here, but yet the prophet's been here, what, we've been seven years? Yes, sir. Seven years straight, we've been on the streets teaching. And we have been neglected. We have been lied on. Police called on us. Dudes pulled guns on us. People try to jump on us, fight us, argue with us, try to hit us with cars, throw gas on us. Hmm. And we out here trying to teach you who you are to help you get out of the condition that you're in. But Deion Sanders come down here and pull up in a in a in a car, uh, you know, decked out with his, with his with his Gucci on and mm-hmm. his Louis Vuitton on and all that stuff like that, stunting on y'all Negroes. We don't do that. Right. Stunned on y'all, but as soon as he pull up to that white boy university, he in a suit. He in a tie, tailor made right. suit, tie. He look real professional. Shade his beard, extra mm-hmm. clean. That show you the difference. He where he always wanted to be. The, the, having the gold chains on and stuff, that was for y'all, man. That was just to make it feel good. Playing the 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 the, the theme music. Them, like, them Edomites in Colorado ain't going for that. No, sir. Was, hey, man, hey, hey, hey. Cut this down, man. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't Jackson, Mississippi. This right. ain't the hood. What's wrong with you, man? Turn that music down, man. You know what I'm saying? You got white boosters in here. I don't like it. <clears throat> ain't no rappers finna be all in the, in the locker room. No. Room. Ain't no way. Smoking dope. Right. Snoop Dogg and he before he come in, he he right. loud loud pack and come up in that joint. <laughs> it's over with. He's what? not bringing Snoop Dogg to Colorado. He not you understand like the whole nature of everything that he claimed to be has now been flipped. And I ain't talking bad about him because I actually like prime time. <laughs> Growing up, you know what I mean. I ain't got no problem with him. I'm just speaking to you brothers and sisters that are left behind right. here in Jackson that continue to look at a celebrity as some type of light. They're not a light to you. They're not. They're going to forsake you. You understand? I guess that yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5, because yes, this is also one of the worst parts That's about right. it. You know what I'm saying? We we end up making these people, these mm-hmm. affluent people, our gods. You know yep. what I'm saying? We turn them into God, and we overlook the God of this Bible. You see what I'm saying? Watch this. Mm. The book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5. Bring it up. Thus said the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. So the scriptures say, cursed be the man that trusts in man. That's what we did. That's what the people of Jackson, Mississippi did. They trusted in a man. Now, mind you, in 2021, them games made $30 million. Mm -hmm. Now, add on to the fact that that was before the quote-unquote water crisis. That was before this undefeated winning season that they had. So you already know they obviously made way more money this season than last season. Where the $30 million at? Right. Why didn't it go to the infrastructure in the city? Why didn't it go to them potholes yeah. that you got to dodge when you right drive in your car? Right outside the stadium. Right outside the stadium. Exactly. Surrounding the stadium is the some of the worst streets. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, you know, I was talking to the brothers about this week, two blocks, or maybe not even two blocks, a block around uh, from the stadium, you got the Fondren area, mm-hmm. which is prestigious. Yes, sir. Yes, Esau sir. put $80 million into that area. You understand? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the, but two blocks away in the hood, there's potholes. That's that's Deuteronomy 28 and right. verse 16. You can literally sure. walk between the two and see yeah, the Yeah, you can, you can stand in between the two and look on one side and see the hood and look on the other side and see uh, luxury. Damn. You understand? Like, But, you know, our people still put stock in these celebrities. So y'all, brothers, y'all better repent. I'll pray to the most high. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the lesson for the day, man. Um, Jews want to replace us and black Christians – Want to erase us. Now, the reason I want to go over this is because there's been so much going on in the world today, obviously, and we're going to continue to ride that train, okay? Um, first and foremost, the so-called white man is not a Jew. He's a Jew. He's a uh, Jewish, which is a convert. He's a convert. He's an Edomite convert to Judaism, okay? Uh, converted by our forefather, John Hycranus. You understand? But before that, he was also always known as Amalek, Esau, Edom. You understand? The Greeks and so on and so forth. But today, in today's time, he calls himself a Jew. And what he has done is he has used the Holocaust and other things that have happened in their quote-unquote history to merge that with our history to make it, to blur the lines and make it seem like we're equal in the sense that they've gone through struggles and so have we. That's why in a lot of movies you see them putting us together. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of television shows you see them merging our histories. Um Jewish people actually helped start the NAACP. Yep. You know what I mean? The 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 lawyer that fought alongside Thurgood Marshall when Thurgood Marshall could not uh, um, practice law in Maryland, they had a Jewish Amalek stand in his stead. Now, this Jewish Amalek was an insurance lawyer. 
He had never tried a federal case. You understand? But through the guise and the, and the and the 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 expertise of Thurgood Marshall, the, he was able to win the case. But they merge our histories together mm-hmm. to make it seem like we should stand side by side. But the Bible says they the ones that's been doing all this evil behind us in the closed doors, behind closed doors this whole time. And we're gonna show you that. Let's give me that first video real quick. The history between blacks and Jews. We're gonna start it from the beginning. We're not gonna play the whole thing, but I just kind of want to give you a correlation of what's been going on. All right. Play that. Communities in America is complex with periods of division, harmony, hostility, suspicion, and apathy. What are the historical roots of both the cooperation and conflict we see between these two communities today? And how do we create a vision for a brighter future? In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, Jewish opinions on slavery were in line with their white neighbors. Mm. As the politics of the U.S. shifted, northern Jews increasingly opposed slavery, while southern Jews continued to be sympathetic to slave ownership, though there were notable exceptions. These included Rabbi David Einhorn, who, in 1861, gave an anti-slavery sermon. His congregation erupted in anger, and the rabbi was forced to flee to the north. Wait! In the early 20th Let's not pass no. by that. In the early 20th century. Oh, oh, oh. Don't pass by that. You heard that? Yes, sir. So he made a he made a um a sermon said, you know what, well, you know, slavery, we should do these folks like this. You know, we should re re uh, evaluate our views on slavery. Them folks said, man, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> made him, them, niggas, them niggas need to stay down there in slavery like that. Hey, don't come up here with that crap. But it's sent your white mouth. Right. They kicked him out of there, kicked him out of the state. He had to leave Maryland and go to Philadelphia. He was in Pennsylvania. Get on down. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, man. And then it said, and you may have missed it, but then it said that many of Amalek uh, from the, the the South were okay with right. slavery. Mm-hmm. Now, why do you think Amalek in the North was starting to get away from slavery? Mm-hmm. They was building factories for Negroes to work in. Right. And they was jealous of how much money them Southern Edomites was making. They're like, yo, they're making so much money off free labor. And we got to spend all these these costs on factories and on different type of, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the, the cotton gin and all these different things. The, the, uh, yeah, steel, the, the resources, steel, the mechanics. Yeah, steel and the mechanics. That spent a lot of money on that. Mm-hmm. Oil. That's used a lot of money that you have to invest into that mm-hmm. to get some type of return. But all you got to do is go buy a slave and just put him out there and say, look, work for 20 years and he can work. You understand? The cost was much higher for them up north. They right. said, man, yo, we even Lincoln, he said, yo, we got to bridge the gap somehow. Right. Send them troops in there to fight. You understand? Mm-hmm. That's what the whole Civil War is about. It's not to free us from slavery. The Civil War was to make sure that it was equal for both the North and the South to make the same amount of money off these Negroes. It was a business decision. Business decision. That's all it was. So go back to the video. I just wanted to point that out because sometimes we let stuff pass by we don't say nothing. Rabbi David Einhorn done got his ass whipped. <laughs> <laughs> they done beat the brakes on the ring. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Play it again. Go ahead. Included Rabbi David Einhorn, who, in 1861, gave an anti-slavery sermon. His congregation erupted in anger, and the rabbi was forced to flee to the north. In the early 20th century, the Jewish community's demographics and opinions began to shift. Jews migrating from hostile countries settled in northeastern American cities where they encountered black southerners fleeing Jim Crow laws and other forms of extreme racism. Coming from anti-Semitic Europe, many Jews recognized and drew attention to the parallels in the black and Jewish experience. Some Yiddish newspapers referred to violent attacks on black Americans, like the Tulsa Massacre, as pogroms. However, even with these positive developments, division remained between black and Jewish Americans. Both groups were lightning rods for other people's hatred, and many Jews who aspired to assimilate or just make a living were afraid of associating too much with a group so openly mistreated. This distance remained until the 1930s, when the rise of the Nazi party in Germany paralleled an increase in anti-Semitism in the US. Fearful and in need of allies, Jewish Americans sought support, and the black community was one of the few to join their cause. You hear that? Black and Jewish Stop. organizations began- So they, whoa, they ain't need us before that. Before that, they were slave masters. Mm-hmm. Can we, matter of fact, there's a book. I just, we're not gonna do this. We're not finna just sit there and just listen to this and just, Everybody just be low to sleep. Like, oh, no, no. We've been pointed out. Uh, give me the book I had. Um, it's uh, Jews and Blacks. It's a book called Jews and Blacks. I, I already posted it, but maybe I got to post it again. It's, it's, it's in there. I'm, I'm going to post it again just in case. 
right. I got to show y'all this. Because this this movie, I mean, this 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 documentary, this piece of this documentary that we're watching is talking about the relationship between so-called Jews and so-called blacks, right? Um, which is Amalek and Israel. We the Israelites, the Amalekites. And in the video, it says that when they needed help, when they needed some help, when that fire got on their behind because of what was going on with Nazis, they sought help from us. Mm. But then we just then we just go then we just see where uh, one of their uh, Einhorn, one of their rabbis got kicked out. They basically exiled him from his church, mm-hmm. took his synagogue from him and everything because he preached on our behalf to free right. us from slavery. That right. slavery was inhumane. Right. But then 45, 50 years later, they getting tore up. You understand? <laughs> people coming against them. People finally seeing they BS because a lot of Southern Edomites do not like Amalek mm-hmm. because they see what they've been perpetuating, what they've been doing all these years. You understand? Now, you got that? Y'all got that for me? Because yes, I want to forget this. Sir. I don't want to forget this. Okay, let's make sure we pull this up. I don't want to forget this. Come on. Go back a few seconds on the video. My God. There shouldn't be no 10 second silence. Come on, man. Go go back to the video while y'all getting the other stuff, if you can. If y'all can multitask like that. Malachi, you might have to step in for this. Goodness gracious, it's ridiculous. All right, um, go to the go to the, the beginning of the book. I mean, the opening of the book, the uh, the cover. So you got half a cover right here. Go ahead. All right, so you got half a cover right here. So you ain't got to see everything. Go to the next. <laughs> <laughs> Mind your business. The book will be a thousand dollars in a in a day. All right, read that right quick. Yes, sir. This was. This was particularly, excuse me, Jews and blacks. This was particularly true of the South before the Civil War. Not only, not only were a disproportionate number of Jews slave owners, slave traders, and slave auctioneers, but when the line was drawn between the races, they were on the white side. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold Wait up. a minute. Hold up. So it says, not only... <laughs> were they slave owners? Right. When it went down, they was on the white side. Now wait a minute. But in the thirties, here they come begging for black folks for mm-hmm. help. I'm telling you, this you can't make this up. You that y'all don't know this? All these um, black pastors that keep coming against us. You don't know this history. You never read this history. These are the things they keep hidden from our people. That's why our people don't read. Right. Our people don't read. Our people don't want to know this information. They want to forget slavery. No, slavery is your connection back to who you are. All right? Go to the next one. I think it's another page. Go down to the bottom. Well, according to Rabbi Corns. According to Rabbi Corns' meticulously documented research on Jews and Southern slavery, only one Jew ever worked as an overseer. But possibly a greater proportion of Jews than Christians were slave owners. So more Jews than Christians. So the reason that a lot of those Jews in the South did not frown on slavery is because they was the ones owning the slaves under slaves. different names, right. saying that they was country rednecks. And they weren't rednecks. It was Amalek. You can't make this up. A lot of these banks, like Freedman Bank, where they just stole all black folk money. Right. We got yep. free, they just stole all black folks money. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Look it up. Freedman Bank it was supposed to be a bank for black uh for black people that were released from slavery that were starting to make money on their own terms and and, and um sharecropping and various other things. They took that money, put it in a bank called a Freedman's Bank. You know what I mean? Them Amalekites mm-hmm. stole all that money and shut the bank down. Folks go to the bank and say, "Hey, this this don't nobody don't nobody working no more. <laughs> it's dust and, and and spider wheel. You come to get your last few dollars. Cold you understand? Blood. And they do that to you." That's what they did. So now it says there's a greater proportion of Jews than Christians that were slave owners. Go back to the book. So that means some of some of these last names we got probably come from Amalek. Uh, some of them come from Amalek. Mm. I got another book that show you how they changed their names, start to mesh their names with British, German, all that. Different names. They made up names. Go ahead. You want to keep going? Same uh, yep. Some Jews. Yes, sir. Some Jews freed slaves in their wills. Many did not. So in their will, that mean they died. So you're going to serve their ass. <laughs> And say they 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, then we'll release you. But by then, they got three, four of your generations in, in slavery. Right. If they got you at 20 and they was 20, then when they hit 40 and you hit 40, now you done had four kids. And then when they hit 60, you hit 60, your kids, they kid, your kids done had another five, 10 kids multiplied. 
So now they don't went from just you to now you that came back and it's 15, 20 of y'all. That's an investment. Yeah. Right. That is appreciation. <laughs> Message. You appreciated value, man. Mm-hmm. Slaves were appreciated value in the sense that they could produce more slaves. That's why they had breeding farms. Come on, man. What are you doing? They they not Christians do not read. Black Christians, some of y'all is just too dumb to just open up a book and read it. You understand? Because you hate God's word. That's why. Go ahead. Yes, sir. A, f- a few Jews freed slaves before, their- before they died. One Jew killed a slave. Others brought their slaves before the law to be harshly punished for trivial offenses. Go ahead. Just, a dis- just as a disproportionately large number of Jews were slave owners, mm-hmm. A disproportionately large number of Jewish merchants sold slaves as they would any other good. Damn. Several of these merchants were prominent in their communities. An acting rabbi, the president of a congregation. So an active rabbi also was a slave owner and or a slave merchant. Now, what's interesting about this is, is because nowadays you got all kind of forms of, of, of economic gain. You can do mm-hmm. real estate. You can do uh, IT, cybersecurity. There's v- different things you can invest in to make money for you and your family. You know right. what I mean? Collateral, all kind of different stuff. Back then, it was slave. Either you're going to own a slave and you be the slave master, you actually deal with the slave, or you just be somebody that act as a merchant. You ever seen a dispatcher for 18-wheelers? Yes, sir. Yeah. They, they don't drive no 18-wheeler. Right. No. Nah. They don't own no 18-wheeler. Right. They just sit at their house. On the phone all day, and they say, hey, I got a load of you going here. They just dispatch it. That's what these merchants were. Yeah. They were dispatchers for slaves. They would tell the masters where to come pick them up at. And guess what they were? Jewish. And the thing about it, I know especially in Mississippi, when they was taking the land from Gad, mm. like you said, these Jewish people were were, the, were some of the first merchants. So they, And they tried to play it off like, you know, where we had stores, where we, you know, dealt, dealt in that type of merchant and merchandise. But in actuality, it was the slaves. The right. ones, the same slaves that they were insuring, when they came and took, this, especially Mississippi from Gad, not only did, did they insure the slaves, but they also was the ones that were selling the slaves out to these plantations, building up areas like Greenville, exactly. Jackson, and all these all these areas. Because they took because the, many of them took the land. They was right. amongst those exactly. that took the land under different names. They because yep. remember the Lord said He gonna reveal the wicked in the last days. Mm-hmm. He being revealed. You seeing who been behind this the whole time. Right. You understand? Now go to the next. Uh, go back to the video real quick. Let's go back to the video. and housing discrimination, combat racial and religious violence, and fight for inclusion in social and professional spheres. In the years following the Second World War, the bond between the communities grew. Jews made up at least 30% of non-black freedom riders, risking arrest and violence for black solidarity. Jewish lawyers battled Jim Crow laws, while black organizations like the NAACP, whose founders included Jews, supported the creation of the State of Israel. Black and Jewish Americans, along with other minorities, led the effort to desegregate medical associations, southern universities, businesses, and community activities while working to introduce social programs for the benefit of all members of society. While southern Jewish support for segregation dwindled, the community was still torn over how to respond. Southern Jews faced pressure from their northern counterparts to condemn segregation, but they feared that making official statements against segregation would result in retribution from their white neighbors. Others argued that the community need not make official statements about a topic that didn't directly relate to the Jewish community. Wait a minute, so wait, it don't, oh, whoa, whoa, it don't affect us? So the hell with them Negroes? Mm -hmm. Right. Which we don't believe in, in, in integration either. You know what I'm saying? The Bible tells us we're supposed to be separate. The scripture said, come out from among them, among them and be ye separate. But what I am saying is, when it was tough for them, they ran to us. Right. But when it was time to step up for us, they backed into a corner. Remember the book said they was on the white side. Yeah. They did not agree with us being uh, released. They took advantage of us like they do today. Yeah. When, when, when they need some type of help. Okay, okay, these people they're in the they're in the down position, they'll take anything. Right. You know, we give them. So I know they'll help us out. Right. Take advantage of us. Even those Southern Jews. Go ahead and play it. 
community. As a result, some southern Jewish institutions withdrew their support for national Jewish organizations that came out publicly against segregation. So they took the their growing money. northern Jewish population did not share the concerns of their southern counterparts. Iconic photos of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel marching alongside the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. encapsulates the best of the black Jewish relationship at the time, often ah! called the golden period between the two communities. Rabbi Joachim Prince, who devoted much of his life to the American Civil Rights Movement, spoke just before MLK took the podium in DC to deliver his famous I Have a Dream speech. Black and Jewish Americans continued the fight for civil rights during the 1964 Freedom Summer Project in Mississippi, where Jewish activists joined others helping register black voters and joined protests in front of courthouses. In June 1964, James Cheney, Michael Schwerner, and Andrew Goodman were abducted and murdered for their fight for equal voting rights. The ensuing outrage pushed Lyndon Johnson to sign the Civil Rights Act the following month. While Jews still faced discrimination in the 1960s, the ability for many Jews to pass as white still set them apart from their black peers. Jews had relatively greater access to education and finances, giving them more class mobility. These opportunities, combined in some part with the healthy bonds between the communities, enabled Jews to open businesses and buy property in predominantly black areas. A degree of coexistence that so, so wait, deceived So stop. So they went from owning us as slaves, right, mm -hmm. to need not help in the 30s, mm. to disguising themselves as being amongst us in the 40s and 50s and 60s, right. to owning the stores in our neighborhood in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. To now owning all of the major corporations, because you can't make this up. Right. No. They could pass. He said, he said, well, at the end of the day, we can still pass white, though. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though they are Amal they are Edomites, they can still pass as white. Yeah. You understand? We ain't had that luxury. We still get our backs beat in and heads and dogs sicked on us in, in water holes in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 60s. Drugs being pushed in our community. What mm -hmm. Amalek was then? When they were dropping, taking drugs from Nicaragua and dropping it off in the hood. What was, what was Amalek? He said, I got what I needed from you. He said, I got, thank you. Thank you, Negroes. Right. <clears throat> Come on, man. Now give me Psalm 55 and 21. Yes, sir. Say what the Bible says. You can't trust these people. Scripture says never trust your enemy. Right. And like I said, with, with all you bought out, Cap, that, that, was, that was over a year's process. Right. You know what I'm saying? And come to find out all those years later, I just want to take over y'all niggas' neighborhood. Right, right. 1948, they put themselves in the land and, and assaulted themselves to establish division. And now everybody feeling sorry for them, thinking that they the people of God. Right. And now they over here like, look at them, look at them people. Look how they helping them other oppressed people. Meanwhile, they was the one that initiated the oppression. Right. That's crazy. A, a, a forked tongue, man. Mm. Read the script. The book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 21. Read it out. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Go ahead. But war was in his heart. Read. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Now, how do we know they were drawn swords? How do we know that the words that he was saying that were smoother than butter, that seemed like he was on our side, how do we know that they were drawn swords? Look at our communities today. Our communities continue to go off the deep end, to just further and further into the abyss of, of oppression and, and hatred and murder and degradation. You understand? But them, they own everything. Right. You say, wait, ho, ho. How we were so-called even at the 60s, and now you sheen shot up here, and my people are further, further down, and you own all the television networks in which my people see themselves through that light. You can't make this up, man. You cannot make this up. Now, give me uh, Sirach 12 and 10. Yes, sir. Those were drawn swords. They swords was drawn. They was waiting to devour. Just sitting back as a lion. Go ahead. The book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 10. Go ahead. Never trust thine enemy. So never trust your enemy. For like as iron rusteth. For just like iron rusteth. Go ahead. So is his wickedness. So is his wickedness. He going to show you his wickedness. Keep reading. Though he humble himself. He may humble himself. And go crouching. And go crouching like he did during the 30s when he needed our help. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, take good heed. But the Bible say, don't believe that. Take good heed to him. Go ahead. And beware of him. And beware of him. Why? And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. Watch this. Give me that Donald Sterling tape. Y'all remember Donald Sterling, the mm -hmm. former owner of the Los Angeles Clippers. Started one minute and 45 seconds. Let's pull it up. 
Let's show you how they, they iron and it wasn't all the way wiped clean. Go ahead. Play it. Thank you, Lily. Honey, if it makes you happy, I will remove all of the black people from my Instagram. You said that before. You said, I understand. I did remove the people that were independently on my Instagram that are black. Well, then why did you start saying that you didn't? You just said you didn't remove them. You didn't remove them. I didn't remove Matt Kemp and Magic Johnson. Why? But I thought Matt Kemp is mixed and he was okay. Just like me. Okay. He's lighter and whiter than me. <clears throat> okay. I met his mother. You, you think I'm a racist? And I don't think you're a racist. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I think you... you Evil heart. I don't think so. I think you have an amazing heart, honey. I think the people around you have poisoned mind and have a way of thinking. It's the world. You go to Israel. The blacks are just treated like dogs. So do you have the, to treat them like that too? The Whoa. white Jews, there's white Jews or black Jews. Do you understand? And are the black Jews less than the white Jews? 100%, 50, 100 And is that right? Stop, stop. So hold on, he said this This is a conversation. He having a conversation, he don't know, he don't know that he's being recorded. Mm. So he's just having an honest conversation. He's speaking what's really in him. And he told her, he said, look, there's black, white Jews and there's black Jews. And she said, well, the white Jews are treated better than she said. He said, 100%, 150%, you damn right, we better. You understand? And he said, he said, she asked him, well, I think you got evil people around. He said, look, it's the way of the world. You go to Israel right now, and the black people treated like dogs. He wasn't telling lies. Right. Mm -hmm. We been there. Our leadership been there. They treat it like dogs. They want them out of the country. Right now, they're exiling them. They just kicked the brothers, uh, the brothers out of Demona, told them they had a couple months. Y'all got to go. They've been there since the 60s, 70s. Yeah. Play it. 100%, 50, 100%. And is that right? It is a question. We don't evaluate what's right and wrong. Mm. We live in a society. We live in a culture. We have to live within that culture. But shouldn't we take a stand for what's wrong and be the change and the difference? I, I don't want to change the culture because I can't. <laughs> it's too big. But you can change up. yourself. Whoa, stop. He said, I don't want to change. The, oh, go, go back. I want, I want you to see it on the screen. I don't want to change the culture because I can't. It's too big and too, and then that unknown, mean they couldn't, they couldn't make out what he said mm -hmm. after that. So he said, I can't change it. Why can't he change it? Why can't he change it? Because the Bible says in Job 9, 24, yes, sir. we read it every week. Yep. <laughs> We're going to read it again. Why can't he change that culture? Because his own his home, his home, his home constituents going to say, man, Donald Sterling, you lost your damn mind, man. Right. They really weren't mad about the racist things he said. They were mad like, bro, you never did. First of all, you said it's black Jews. We don't want them to know that. Right. Second of all, you told them that we treat them like dogs in Israel. Bro, you can't be talking like that. You got to learn how to control your woman. Go ahead. <laughs> the book of Job, chapter 9 and verse 24. Read up. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Go ahead. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. And he covered the faces of the true judges of this earth. Go ahead. If not. If not. Where and who is he? And if it ain't the so-called white man, if it ain't Amalek, then who is it then? That's what, that's what the Lord is asking you. Okay, well, then who is it? If it ain't him. Because who else has told you that there's somebody that they're not? I did the biggest identity theft. You know, they got, you can get lawsuit for that. Right. Stealing somebody's identity right. and, and taking out loans and, you know, doing all kinds of manners of evil in their name. You can get life in prison in some cases. But this man done stole our identity and got the whole earth thinking he us. He got the whole earth thinking he us. And now he blatantly telling you, that's what we read in Sirach early. Mm -hmm. He says, set him not by thee. Well, watch this. Go back. Yes, sir. Sirach 12. Yes, sir. Was it, was, where is that at where it says, set him not by thee? Verse 12. Verse 12. Read it. The book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 12. Read it. Set him not by thee. Don't set him by you. Go ahead. Lest when he hath overthrown thee. Go ahead. He stand up in thy place. He go, what? What are you going to do? He stand up in thy place. When they overthrew us, when they infiltrated our armies. And start to be a fight amongst us and be amongst us when we converted them to Judaism. What happened? The Romans set them up as client kings. 
Herod and his an Herod's ancestors were once under our forefathers, mm -hmm. the Hasmonean dynasty. We taught them Judaism. We taught them the scriptures. You understand? We we forced them to learn our custom and our ways. Then all of a sudden, you you go three, four hundred years later, or two hundred years later, whatever. Then the time of Christ come into play, and now they ruling over us. Mm -hmm. The same people that we I'm talking about, and they they the king of the Jew. He the king of the Jews. Come on, man, you can't make this up. You ain't ever asked yourself how that happened. You you black Christians that hate us so much that you refuse to do research. You ain't never thought. Well, wait a minute. Herod wasn't a Jew. Herod was an Idumean. How did he become a Jew? You ain't never asked that. Take, give me Acts thirteen and one. Yes, sir. Just real quick. Acts thirteen, verse one. The Negro is a phenomenon. He's a phenomenon, and he coming against us. He want to erase us. He want us out the way. You know the black Christian want us out the way. Yes, sir. And we yes, stop sir. teaching. If every Israelite stopped teaching, shut down their social media, and we all went back into Christianity, the Christians would be so happy. They'll accept us as a mass uh, a, a mass exodus from Israelitism. <laughs> if you want to call it that. They y'all ain't y'all ain't Israelitism no more. <laughs> Even though you can't be an Israelite by conversion, you're right. an Israelite by blood. Right. Go ahead, read it. The book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 1. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, now there were in the church that was at Antioch read. certain prophets and teachers uh -huh. as Barnabas uh -huh. and Simeon that was called nigger. Called nigger because they were black. Go ahead. And Lucius of Cyrene. Go ahead. That's, and a, that's Africa. Go ahead. And Manan. Which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Well, it was brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Now, remember, Saul learned at the feet of Gamaliel, one of the mightiest teachers. You understand? Doctor of the law, had much understanding. Mm -hmm. So that means Herod was there too. Mm -hmm. Herod and his brothers, they was there. His family, right. they was there. You know, when you read in, in later on, it called, give me that word called, uh, Herod, they called the, the Edomite a Jewess. It's in Acts 25, I think. Give me a second. Acts 25 and verse... Uh, I forgot her name. It just slipped me. It's in Acts 25. I got to get it. They said so they came in with great pump. Uh, around verse... I don't want to. I don't want to guess. I want to get straight to it. I don't want to go. I want to. Great pomp is in verse twenty-three. What is saying in verse twenty-three? And now on the morrow when Agrippa was yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But Bernice, but earlier it say that. Oh, let me see. I don't. I don't. Uh, all right, I get to it. I, I had to come back to it. I ain't got. It. I want to have it pinpoint. I ain't got it right now. I'm still gonna use this new Bible, y'all. Have mercy on me. All right. Anyway, Herod was brought up with Saul, meaning he had. Understanding the custom of the Jew. Now, when you go to Acts 26 and verse, uh, where is it? Verse 3, verse 2 and 3. Yes, sir. The book of Acts chapter 26 and verse 2. Wait Wait I think myself happy, King Agrippa, mm -hmm. because I because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, go ahead. touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Whereof I am accused of the Jews. Go ahead. Especially. Because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. So how did Herod, how did he know that Agrippa, Herod Agrippa, how did, he, how did Saul know that he was an expert in understanding of the Jews? How? In our customs ordinances, how? Because he was raised up what well, Saul was raised up. The best education, the best Israelite education he can get in understanding our history, they was receiving it. But at the same time, they was receiving it to rule over us. It's the same thing that you see today. It's the same thing. Now they got the Torah today, the so-called Torah, you know, they call it the Torah or whatever, right. and the Tanakh, right? And they're reading these scriptures, and they, and they want us all to believe that that's them. But when you read Jeremiah 14 and 2, which is in the Tanakh, it says that the Jews are black unto the ground. This is what I'm saying. Like, that's what Sirach 2, go back to Sirach. 12 and 12, one more time. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 12, verse 12. Bring it up. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, uh -huh. he stand up in thy place. Go ahead. Neither let him sit at thy right hand. Go ahead. Lest he take, excuse me, lest he seek to take thy seat. Mm, seek to take your seat. Meaning what? Say he the Jew. Go ahead. And thou at the last, remember my words. And you're going to remember the words Sirach wrote down. Go ahead. And be mm. pricked therewith. And that's what, we, that's what we are today. Today, in today's time, today, 
we reading these words like, man, we should have never let these folks come amongst us. Right. <laughs> right. We should have so, never had sympathy on them what they was going through. We should have yeah. separated ourselves even further from them. That's but right. But guess what? At the end of the day, that's Bible prophecy mm-hmm. that they was going to rule over us. Now, give me the book, The 13th Tribe, real quick. We got a special guest coming up next hour, too, by the way. I'll pray. So, I'll, I'll pray. so buckle up for that one. I'll pray. Uh, let's pull that up real quick. The 13th Tribe. I had it in there. Yep, let's pull it up. And after this, we'll go to a quick commercial break and we'll come right back. All right, let's read that. The 13th, Arthur Kostler, the 13th tribe. So he Amalek. This is Amalekite. Go ahead. Open the book. I just want to read the part that's underlined. Let's read that. Yes, sir. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from Jordan, but from the Volga. Damn. Not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus. Once believed to be the cradle of the Aryan race. And that genetically they are more closely related to the Hun, Uyghur, and Ma- Magyar Magyar tribes Magyar tribes than to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Damn, go ahead. Should this turn out to be the case, then the term anti-Semitism will become void of meaning. Damn. Based on the misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims, mm. the story of the Khazar Empire as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history history has ever perpetu- 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 perpetrated. So perpetrated. wait a minute, it said that it's a hoax. <laughs> they not the real, this is an Amalekite, this is a Jew, so-called Jew. He telling you, oh yeah, we ain't Jews. <laughs> we closer to Caucasians than anything. All right. You understand? So if you, if you want to separate us from Caucasians, you, you're mistaken because we are Caucasian. Right. We're the same. We come from the Caucasus, mountains of Georgia, Russia. We not the people from the land, nor are we related to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He telling you that from his own words. He's like the Lord said he's gonna make his own tongue fall upon themselves. You can't make this up, brothers and sisters. This ain't us. We didn't write it. Go ahead. I just wanna say it's it's fact because what you said earlier, bring it up to um a couple of years back. Yep. They said we we be more related to, to the white than than Negroes. Right. So it's true. Absolutely, 100%. Hey, so let's go to a quick commercial break. We'll come right back here on Escaping the Plantation 2.0. We got a special guest coming up next hour. We're going to give you fire all the way up into that, and then we're going to let him take off. All right? <laughs> so, hey, we'll be right back here on Escaping the Plantation 2.0. <laughs> Scheming that scripture that we said before. We Pull up and hop out with Bibles and precepts and cut up the demons like give them some more. Yeah, Christ coming yeah. back with a legion redeeming the people, the nation deceiving of whore. Uh. And get them power to break all the heat and with a rod of iron, make them bleed and destroy. Oh, uh, get your faith fixed. Christian still stuck in the matrix. Your pastor for profit, a teacher for hire. Yeah, he a magician that play tricks. And we put in work, yeah, great bricks. And the South the best man, Tay D. And we from the bottom, yeah, straight out the mud. And we ready for rest like day six. I gather the truth, purple shirts with the sound on their boots. Terrestrial till he give us a boost. Never hide, man, cause we on the news. The demons try, but they know it. Yeah. I hit the door and wait. And you call yourself a man of God? You uh, is not a man of God. Uh, you sit up here and don't have rape. Cause Tommy Dark gonna trouble. We on the move, we on the move. You got all these damn game makers in your hood. You don't have to get the game makers out. This is the right to take over. Over. Like I'm a movie soldier. soldier. Waiting for God breaks over. Try to please for a sister. She's smiling, people. Her whole breast is out. Hello, Ms. Red Most High, quite the best. And we at the SWAC Championship game, Jackson State versus Southern University. I'm here with Captain Hoshire. We come out here to raise up our people. A lot of y'all be talking mess about what we ain't doing, but yet we never see you. Hey man, what the hell y'all doing with y'all college education, man? Y'all ain't using y'all college education to get out, man. You use your college education to sit up there to uh, elevate you. 
We out here to counter, man. So quit talking about what the hell we ain't doing. Cause you ain't doing. With this rain, see the snow, anything for my people to grow. Watch us put money where you go in next, nigga. You only ever need to know. Racist is not for other races. Preaching the city the worst places. Place like that, we in it faces. Praise all praise. All praise. Hey, you heard from Captain Hoshai. Y'all ain't doing it. Yes, sir. A damn thing. Hey, all praise to the most high. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back from commercial break. Escaping the Plantation 2.0. Like I said, we got a special guest coming up for the second hour. Hey, listen, I forgot to make, make sure I mentioned this. On YouTube, we are on IUIC in the classroom, too. They done gave us a strike, y'all. They hate us down here in the, in the silk, man. The devil! The Southern Jews, huh? That's them Southern Jews, man. <laughs> <laughs> the Southern Amalekites, they, they amongst us, man. They uh, they gave us a strike, so we, we we unable to post. So it is what it is. So I pray to the most high we had to use IUIC in the classroom, too. Hey, regardless, the, the word of the Lord going out. So for those of you that's looking for us on IUIC Mississippi Burning, we're not on IUIC Mississippi Burning today. We are on IUIC in the classroom, too. All right, so share this class from that platform, okay? So, with that being said, so we just read Arthur Coastal's book, right? And he said that sure. basically, them, them folks calling themselves Jews, which are his people, mm -hmm. are not really Jews, okay? So, get uh, Revelation 3 and 9 real quick. Just to go with what he was saying in his book, because we didn't make him write that book. You understand? We weren't even, I ain't know nothing about that book until I came into the truth. He wrote this book. Under his own merits. You understand? He wrote this book on his own mind, on his own guys, and they killed him. Put him and his wife to death. All right, read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 9. Go ahead. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, uh -huh. which say they are Jews. Which say they are Jews. Go ahead. And are not. And are not. But do lie. But do what? But do lie. They lying. <laughs> the Lord said you're lying. You are a liar. Go ahead. Behold. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet mm. and to know that I have loved thee. They are not going to want to do that. It enrages them to even think of having to do that. How do I know that? Give me the next video. How do I know it pissed them off for them to even think that they're going to have to bow down to us? Play the video. This is an Edomite, Amalekite um, comedian mad at Kanye West. Let's see what he said. This bastard will be stopped now this is this is over i will not allow this hate monger to spread hate yet again in this world against my people or against any good people in this planet against any marginalized group or any group in this planet this ill-educated monster who is only in it for himself that can no longer stand he will not be allowed to normalize white supremacy in this world, and he will not be allowed to normalize Adolf Hitler, the monster of all monsters, who killed factually six million Jews and up to five million other people. Do you understand? That will not ever again stand. He turned down the invite to go to the Museum of Tolerance. Go to a concentration camp in Germany, you moron, you despicable human being in it only for yourself. My family was killed by Hitler and the Nazis during the Holocaust. This right here is my grandfather. This is my hero, okay? My grandfather, his parents right here, slaughtered by Adolf Hitler. His four brothers slaughtered by Adolf Hitler. It's my grandpa on my dad's side. My grandpa on my mom's side. This is him right here. Slaughtered. He was not slaughtered. His parents slaughtered by Adolf Hitler. His four brothers slaughtered. This is my grandparents, my grandmother on my mom's side, her three brothers and parents slaughtered by Adolf Hitler. That's 17 deaths just in my family alone. How dare you say it to my face? Take off your mask and say it to my damn face. You son of a... I wish I could swear on the air right now. Pause it. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> you gotta shut your wife and figure it out. Kanye was a billionaire. Who the hell is you? <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's the pride in them. Right. The pride that burned. How dare this nigga? We ain't gave this nigga riches. Right, that's it. And wealth and fame. Yeah. How dare he speak? You see how mad he is? He may. If, if Kanye West was in front of him, he'd put Kanye West to death. Yes, sir. If he had a gun or a knife, he'd have slit his throat. Just put a bullet in his head. Now, here's my question. Where's the records? Where the records at? Of all the no. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'm not saying that the Holocaust didn't happen. Because that it's too many 
pictures and you know what I'm saying? Right. But where's the records of how we know that happened to his family? Just because he on air saying it. Right. And why did he give it to the IT people so they can show it more <laughs> You know, on the I'm, screen, he, he got a picture from I'm the living room. One of the pictures, one of the pictures looked like, uh, one of the, like from like 2003 or something. Yeah, it yeah. was a little Polaroid. It was, it was a really nice Ain't color. No way he got a Polaroid from the damn 40s. <laughs> oh, wait. Bring it out, Cal. Or the 30s. <laughs> what the hell? Scriptures ain't prove all things. You got to prove it. <laughs> but, but because of his anger and because he white, mm. yeah. his whiteness gives him the ability to not prove nothing. Right. Just use, uh, just be adamant about it. Raise his voice and get angry. And all of a sudden, we all supposed to be shocked by it and just chill, supposed to go down our spine. Oh, my God, look at how much they've been through. But yet, his same ancestors that he's talking about ensured slave ships that eventually led to over 100 million so-called blacks being killed. Right. No, no crying about that. His ancestors helped fund the uh, voyage to this side of the earth. To kill 77 million Native Americans. We're not even including uh, Issachar. Right. Or Naphtali. Or Zebulon. Mm -hmm. Or Asher. We ain't even talking about Simeon or Manasseh. We just talking about uh, Gad and uh, Reuben. That's it. That's 77 million by itself right there. If you you put all the deaths together, it's over a billion. Over Damn. a billion of our ancestors. Am I lying about that? No, no sir. It's still going on. And it's still going on. And, and right. counting. Right. That's the, and it's crazy because like why 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 would Kanye West got to go to have to go to a tolerance museum? What right. about what about all the stuff for us? Like we ain't got no tolerance museum, but you can come to the hood. You can see right. that in li- live in color. Right. All the damage that has been done to our people by his people. What at, what what the energy at then? And you he know? know that, bro. He know that. It's a, it's to continue to keep this narrative going. You understand? Now watch this. Go to go to the next. I ain't gonna even watch all the. He mad as hell. He <laughs> he pissed. It is what it is. To hell with your grandmama now. I don't give a damn. <laughs> go to the. Uh, Forget <laughs> about it. It was in the past. Like right, you said. Right. Right. What about my grandma then? Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Uh-huh. Died in oppression. Right. Yeah, but we supposed to have be sympathetic with yours. But I was been dying and still dying. Right. Right. You know, I, ain't, I don't care about that. Go to <laughs> go to the next one. I dog to, and die alone. Right. Go to uh Michael Rappaport. He mad. Kooky Kanye West. What are you talking about? Defcon one, Defcon two. See, see, Jews. We we know about Defcon three, Defcon four. You're not doing Defcon anything. With the Jews, we we know about that. Defcon five, six million. We know all about that. You working on the design for the new uh, Yeezy Jewish space lasers? You're on some Marjorie Taylor Green, Charlottesville. The Jews will not replace us. I defended you, prick. You dusty prick. You look dusty. That's never going to be fashionably acceptable. Get the dust out of your beard. Take a shower, okay? I don't care what you're on or what you're not on. Take a shower. I was there. I defended you when Pistol Pete Davidson was uh, sugar dick in your wife. But this, this is unacceptable, okay? You creep, you. And you're not going to be president. I know you think you're going to manifest things. You're never. Stop. I'm telling you. So they were friends at one time. Mm-hmm. That's what, you know, an elder told me that one time, one of the leadership told me that one time, said, um, e- Esau, are we going to be your friend till you start saying Christ black? Right. Till you start saying we the people of the book and that Christ coming to redeem us and that we're going to start keeping the commandments in our community to prepare ourselves for the second coming of Christ. Oh, no, now you enemy. You the enemy now. Give me Galatians 4, 16. Yes, sir. Now you the enemy. You understand? Kanye West was friends with this guy at one time. They had uh, mutual friends. They would come together and, you know, hey, I said, I defended you when this happened, when that happened. But as soon as Kanye West speaks some truth. Now, Kanye West said, I love Jewish people. I ain't got nothing against y'all, but y'all media is per- perpetuating evil in my community. And we are the Jews, too, so I can't be anti-Semitic. And he mad at that. <laughs> Devil, man. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 16. Read it Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? So, are we enemies, Michael Rappaport? We used to be boys. You could sit down and go over script. Can you at least ask me, okay, where you getting that from that you a Jew? Let me go show you where I can do Robert 28. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. You can reject it after that, obviously. We know you're going to reject it because you don't want us to be the Jew and you be the Jew too because if that's the case, then somebody lying. Right. So now what's happening is they are becoming afraid. You speaking this truth is too much truth and that truth is too powerful. It will, like the Bible says, it's like a mustard seed and it's going to end up being bigger than all the mm. trees. 
Now watch this. This is what they really scared of. Go to Habakkuk two and uh, three and twelve. Yes, sir. This is what they fear. When he start talking like that, that's like, oh shoot, it's about to go down. Christ gonna come soon. Go ahead. You said two and twelve. Yep, Habakkuk three and twelve. Yes, sir. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3 and verse 12. Bring it up. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Mm -hmm. Thou didn't That's about Christ. Marching through the land in indignation. That means righteous anger. Christ going to march through the land with righteous anger. Go ahead. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Ooh, and he going to what? Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. You know what I mean? A thresh slaughter. <laughs> thresh through. Going to thresh the heathen in his anger. Go ahead. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. And why did he go forth to thresh the heathen? For the salvation of thy people. For the salvation of God's people. That's right. Of the Israelites. That's who Christ's people is. Or are. If you want me to use proper English. That ain't my first language. My first language is Hebrew. But I don't know it. But they took it from me. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm speaking English. <laughs> so it says, Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. Read. Even for salvation with thine anointed. With thine anointed. Go ahead. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. Uh-huh. By discovering the foundation unto the neck. Say la. I like the way Bishop put that. That means mm. Christ going like this. I like that right there. And it ain't me. You know, you ain't got to worry about me doing this. <laughs> or me. You don't have to worry about me doing this. Bring it up. In this life. In this life. Like, right. Me and my brothers. Right. We are a non-violent, Bible-based <laughs> movement. Okay? We do not condone or uh, <laughs> advocate any acts of violence <laughs> against any race and this their agenda. You know what I'm saying? We advise that anyone knows of any plot to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities as stated in Leviticus 5, verse 1. Okay? <laughs> but the Bible says... In the future, this is the judgment for the heathen. Christ is going to march through the land, thresh them through, and he's doing it for the salvation of his people. And the Bible, Bible part says, and he is wounded the head of the house of the wicked. That's America. Mm -hmm. Then it says, by discovering the foundation unto the neck, say la. So Christ going at the neck, literally. Okay? All praises to the most high. Won't he do it? Won't he do That's it? That's hey, right. Watch this. Go to that black, black, uh, it's a uh, black and Jewish interview with Godfrey. Y'all got to see this. So um, y'all know this brother. He is he's an Igbo. I didn't know I didn't know he was Igbo from the Igbo tribe um, from Nigeria. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Uh, he's a comedian, Godfrey. Um, and he's been doing yeah, yeah, he's, okay. he's been a comedian for a while now. For, mm -hmm. But he's but as of late, he's come out and he spoke out about some issues. He's a comedian now. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can't take comedians seriously because they always looking to make a joke. But he said a lot of truth in this interview. So he's interviewing with this Edomite. Uh, and this Edomite is the same Edomite that made that video going at Kanye West about um, about us being the Jews and them being the Jews. The Limba tribe and all that. You know, Black Bishop been going over. Now they all of a sudden going through and converting these people to Judaism and saying that that's the great awakening. That's the awakening of Northern and Southern Kingdom. You can't make this up. Y'all started, uh, what I had you started at? Four what? 406 or something like that? Yes, sir. So start that for me. In prison. And well, now Jesus it's, Christ, let him say it. Let him down. You go. What's his, what's his whole name? Rudy Rockman. Rudy Rockman. Rudy Rockman. Hey, <laughs> there welcome, you go. brother. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, man. So, man, so where, you were born in Israel. I was born in France, actually. What? Oh, well, Ashanti. Ashanti. Bienvenue. Bienvenue or something. Welcome. Right? Yeah. Bienvenue. Okay. <laughs> Ashanti. I'm not French. Damn. All of my grandparents were born in different countries okay. due to being persecuted as the people of Israel. Of course. All of my grandparents were kicked out of the countries they were born in, and that's how my parents were first generation born in France. Wow. And me being second generation. Then I moved all around the world, Israel, Miami, LA, Palo Alto, New York, Asia, South America. Everywhere, yeah. And growing up, I realized that it doesn't matter where I was born, grew up, lived in, traveled to, reside in, what I really am is a Jew. And so right. I asked myself deeper questions. What does it even mean to be a Jew? Because we're told today that Judaism is a religion. But in every single religion, if you don't believe in the God, deity, book, or prophet of that religion, you're not a part of it. Mm. A Christian that doesn't believe in Jesus is not a Christian. Mm. A Muslim that doesn't believe in Muhammad is not a Muslim. Right. But a Jew that doesn't believe in the Torah and Hashem, although a fundamental part of our culture, is still a Jew. So I realized that Judaism is not a religion. It's an ancient civilization. Like the Mayans, like the Aztecs, like the Maoris, mm. like the Yazidis. Mm. And so that's our civilization. We're called Israelites. We're called Hebrews. We're called Jews. These are all different names during different periods of time. Right. Stop. And there's a split. Nobody calls them Israel Israelites. Nobody. 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 They call them Israelis. Mm. Right. They're not. It, nobody has ever called them Israelites ever. You understand? Go ahead. 
amongst our civilization, the kingdom of Israel, which your tribe, God, was displaced to, and the kingdom of Judea, where Judah, Benjamin, and Levites, my family, which were spread stop. out all across. Stop! 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 Wrong. Stop! Stop! You heard he just said to him? <laughs> he said, your, your tribe, tribe is God, which is the northern kingdom. Right. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. How the northern kingdom black is tar? <laughs> And this Edomite sitting up here looking like he could be Arabic. You better shut your white he mouth. I'm not kidding. Yes, he he, he like he from a tropical area, a tropical Edomite. But he gonna say, yeah, I'm from the southern kingdom and you from the northern kingdom. That means Christ look like you. Right. If he from the southern kingdom, that means Christ look like him. But there's no biblical prophecy that proves he from the tribe of Levi. Hell what is that? What is that? I can't just run it back, man. This is ridiculous. Right there. Go ahead. The kingdom of Israel, which your tribe, God, was displaced to, and the kingdom of Judea, where Judah, Benjamin, and Levites, my family, which were spread out all across. And eventually, we split, and we went to the four corners of the earth. And in our generation, we're going to see a reunion of all those tribes. You really? damn right. But it ain't going to be because of your lies. We're going to see a reunion? It's our generation is going to do that. Really? Absolutely. What scripture? It's going to be of all colors, shapes, sizes. It's, it's always been of all colors. You yeah. always had Stop. But I Stop. Wrong. Stop. Jeremiah 14 yes, 2. Sir. We're not Bring doing this. We're not doing this. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Yeah, Bring yes, out sir. the basics. Yes, sir. He a liar. He told me it's always been of all colors. That's not true. Win. Matter of fact, go before Jeremiah. Go to Genesis. Yes, go sir. to Genesis 42. I want you to start at verse 7. Yes, sir. You know that crazy white man think he know everything. He think he know everything. <laughs> he don't know a damn thing. This is ridiculous, man. You got that for me? Yes, sir. Read it. The book of Genesis, chapter 42 and verse 7. Bring it up. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them. Go ahead. And spake roughly unto them. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. So how they come from the same mother and father? Well, I think Joseph might have had a different mother from them. Regardless, Joe, no, Benjamin had a different mother. But what I'm showing you is, is that Joseph had brothers that looked at him and could not recognize him. Joseph was the second in command over all Egypt. If Joseph was a white boy, they would have known them big, tall Africans, them big, yeah. tall Hamites yes, is letting this little white dude, he looks just like my little brother Joseph. That what Judah would have said. Right. Judah said, man, hold up, you like Joseph. <laughs> they didn't recognize him because they was all black. That means Joseph was black, black. Right. That Joseph wasn't light skinned. He wasn't brown skinned like you and I. Right. Joseph was very dark skinned in order for them to think that he was an Egyptian pharaoh or the, the, the second to pharaoh. Right? Now, go to chapter 50. I just wanted to go before because somebody might say, well, Jeremiah 14 and 2, you know the kingdoms, when one, the kingdom split before that and some of the northern kingdom got, you know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to show you even before that what color they were, 50 and 6. The book of Jer I mean, the book of Genesis chapter 50 and verse 6. Read and up. Pharaoh said, go up and bury thy father. Read. According as he made thee swear. Read. And Joseph went up to bury his father. Mm -hmm. and, with, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh. So you got Joseph, We've already proven he's very dark-skinned. His brothers didn't even recognize him. So you got Joseph, very dark-skinned man, and then you got all of servants of Pharaoh. You got Egyptians with him. Go ahead. The elders of his house. Go ahead. And all the elders of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. And all the house of Joseph uh -huh. and his brothers. And the other brothers from the 12 tribes. Go ahead. And his father's house. Yeah, his father's house, meaning his father's family. Go ahead. Only their little ones and their flocks and their herds. They left in the land. Excuse me. They left in the land of Goshen. Now skip down to 11. Verse 11. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites saw the morning in the floor of a tide, they said, this is a grievous morning to the Egyptians. Mm. Wherefore, the name of it was called uh, Abel Mizraim, which is beyond Jordan. Now wait a minute. It said the Canaanites, who was the brother to the Egyptians. Right, right. The, Ca the Egyptians... Was the sons of Ham, the Canaanite were the sons of Ham, the grandsons. Great, 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 great. You understand? Canaan was one of Ham's sons. Mizraim, or the Egyptians, was one of Ham's sons. Right or wrong? Right. right. So now, you got two Hamitic tribes. See the Egyptians walking with the Israelites and didn't say, hey, they go Hebrews and Egyptians together. Right. They said, man, this is a grievous morning for the Egyptians. Look at all these Egyptians. They was all black. Blackity black, black. 
So no, it ain't about been about all colors. Who is this guy? We don't believe you. What is that? Rockman? Rosenbach Rockman? The Whatever they have. Rock. Rock to you. Say. <laughs> Well, come on, man. This dude a liar, man. Now go back to it. Somebody's always been a colors. Go back a few seconds. We're going to expose them today. Put it. It's going to be of all colors, shapes, sizes. It's always been of all colors. You yeah, always had Jews of all colors. But I know. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Roy, man. Here's the problem. They marketed the Jewish thing as the Ashkenazis. Yeah. You know, it was like all my friends that are, don't I look Jewish? I have. You know how many Jewish comics I work with every night? Everybody look Jewish. I look Jewish. My friend Mordecai, who's one of my best buddies in the world, he he does. It's hilarious. He goes, "Don't I look like a Jew?" And he'll turn his side face. Look at my Jewish nose. And they marketed it as it, as if it was they were the only ones because it it became a look. Like it became a race. Oh, I look Jewish. And then I was like, and I and I know in college and just learning from Minister Farrakhan and Malcolm, they would be like, "There are black Jews, guys. Absolutely. Black, but." It, and it, and it got to the point where it became racist. Now they were like, "What do you mean the Schwarzes are Jews? The Schwarzes? No way! That's a derogatory name for black person." Well, I'm not Ashkenazi, and, but you have to understand. But I know. Where I'm just saying from. they would say that. The reason it comes from there, you have yes. to understand that Ashkenazi Jews, which is a percentage of the Jewish population, not all, had an experience for two thousand years amongst Europeans, and the oh, mindset yeah. of Europeans is that they are the superior, yes. and others are inferior. Yes. So two thousand years of that is mental colonization mm. of adopting that kind of mentality. That it's not only towards Jews that have dark skin; it's also Sephardic Jews like myself. Yes. Stop. Or Yemenite so Jews. now he's oppressed. So now the the the, the real fair skinned Jews look down on. It. Stop that line, man. Go to stop it. Go to 9 minutes, 46 seconds, man. These folks, I'm telling you, they will lie, lie, lie all day, every day. You understand? Go to 9 minutes, 46 seconds. I had to skip past that BS. Read it. All right, play it. Excuse me. You're at the top to become the oppressor for some reason. I think in any like society, you know what I mean? I think the role of a Jew within white supremacy throughout history yes. has always been to use them as the face of the oppression. Yes. For example, the Jews that had an experience in Europe, which again, like we said, it was not all Jews. Right. They were used to be the tax collectors. They were not allowed to own land. They were not allowed to participate in agrarianism, to sell crops and cattle and so on. They were used to be the tax collectors. Why? Yeah. Because they were taxing them by 90% of their earnings. <sighs> and who was taking the money? It was the Jews, but not for the Jews. It was for the king and queen. Mm. But the face of the oppression was the Jew. And that's what we see happening again today, where people are experiencing oppression from the top but yeah. the face that they're seeing is the Jew and then they're saying the Jews run the banks the Jews run the well, media right. the Jews run the they government do, they and do. you have right. some individual right. Jews that have been let to rise up into those positions mm -hmm. intentionally in order to make it seem as we're the ones that are responsible stop, for those stop. crimes stop so he said <laughs> you know that white man love his money <laughs> he not giving nobody no job for no reason right. he said that they now okay so now they elevated all Amalek up into these positions where they own corporations banks and so on and so forth to give off the impression that it's the Jews that's oppressing everybody. These people lie, bro. That's all they do. Didn't we just, we did a, a very in-depth study about all the Amalekites that run all the, the corporations yes. and all the media outlets. And every single somebody that worked there at the top is Amalek. It's Amalek. That's right. <laughs> hey, now here we go. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Yes, sir. Revelation 12, verse 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 9. Read it. And the great dragon was cast out. Uh huh. That old serpent. Read. Called the devil and Satan. Go ahead. Which deceiveth the whole world. Which deceiveth the whole world. Go ahead. He was cast out uh -huh. into the earth. Uh huh. And his angels were cast out with him. So it said the great red dragon. I want you to go higher. Yes, Go up a little bit. It said the great red dragon. Read verse 3. Yes, sir. Verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. Read. Having seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. Great European powers. Go ahead. And seven crowns upon his head. Go ahead. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. The third part of the stars of heaven is Judah Benjamin Levi, known as the Jew. Not him. He ain't no Jew. Go ahead. And he cast them to the earth. Go ahead. And the dragon stood before the woman. Go ahead. Which was ready to be delivered. Uh -huh. For to devour her child as soon as it were born. Stop. It said that the dragon stood before the woman, before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who did that? Who did that? Go to Matthew. Yes, sir. Two thirteen. Yes, we got to move it about it. You understand? Read the book of Matthew, chapter two and verse thirteen. Read it out. And when they were departed, 
Behold, the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph in a dream. Go ahead. Saying, Arise and take the young child uh -huh. and his mother Bread. and flee into Egypt. Why? And be thou there until I bring thee word. Uh -huh. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And the Herod going to seek the young child to do what? To destroy him. He was the one that stood and waited for the child to be born so mm. he could destroy him. But in, the, in Revelation 12, it calls him the great red dragon that deceiveth the whole world. So they do run the world. Yes, sir. Because the Bible says Herod, who was an Idumean, a Malachite, Edomite, <laughs> a Hebrew, a red Hebrew, a Malachite, <laughs> Idumean, Edom, you understand, that ruled over the Jews. He was the one that stood before the child, waiting for the child to be born so he could slaughter the child to stop the Messiah from coming. Wait a minute. But the Bible said he the great red dragon that deceived the whole world. How you got the power to deceive everybody? You got to own media. You have to own the media to be able to do so, brothers and sisters. Don't listen to these people. God says they run the world. God says they run the media. God says they are the red dragon. And it's time for us to stop feeding into the lies that they done taught us because they own the media. So now... His explanation for all this stuff that's going on is, uh, oh, they just putting the white man in front just so. <laughs> they just putting the Amalekite in front because all the Jewish people in front, so you'll hate us. We don't really own anything. We really broke. Wait a minute. Don't America give y'all 70 million plus a year? Damn. I don't think y'all broke. Did they, they didn't make the Iron Dome for y'all? Yeah. They help protect y'all from mm -hmm. missile? Go back to it. <laughs> Responsible for those crimes. And by the way, most of those Jews in Hollywood and other places, people that Kanye was calling out, don't even themselves care about Judaism. Usually don't marry Jews themselves. They're not they even care. real. Are they the, real? Are the, they phony? Zionist? Being, this Zionist being, thing? being a Jew, you can't take that away from you, right? It's like being a black person. You can't take that take away, away from right. you. You will always be a Jew, but that doesn't mean they have the best interest of the Jewish people or act oh, on behalf of the Jewish people. Of course. Wait, so when wait, you have wait, individual hold up. But you're allowing them to do it. If these your brother, it like you, you my right. brother. If I saw you doing evil, don't the law say I'm supposed to correct you? Don't right. the law yes, say sir. love your neighbor as yourself? That's if right. If your brother go off, you're supposed to rebuke him. Mm, if said. a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing, he's mm -hmm. supposed to, him and all his constituents and all these so powerful Amalekites, instead of focus, folks in their ears, you know, trying to teach us that we uh, were black Jews that converted to Judaism, instead of doing that, he need to go and talk to his his family and say, look, y'all oppressing these folks. Y'all putting music out there to destroy them. Y'all putting all these evil images in their television shows. <laughs> he ain't doing that. Why he ain't advocating for that? Because he don't care. He was set up to teach lies. He was set up to make you Negroes go to sleep because the Israelites been teaching the truth all these years and it's sending shockwaves through the earth. And now people That's starting to realize right. we the Jews. That's right. And now they got to do what's called damage control. Right. Oh, man, it's damaged. Let's control this damage by saying, yeah, y'all Jews. Wait a minute, hold up. You said we was Gentiles. They been teaching us we was Gentiles all this time, and no rabbi came out and said, no, they're not Gentiles. They're actually the real Jews. <laughs> they never said that. But now all of a sudden, this truth springing out of the earth, and it's hitting them from every side. Now all of a sudden, well, yeah, you know, you guys actually are Jews. You're from the tribe of God. <laughs> <laughs> but this whole time, he wasn't from the tribe of God. He was a Nigerian coon. You understand? <laughs> Come on, man. Stop listening to these people. So go go ahead, go to thirteen oh three. You at thirty? Where you at? Go to thirteen oh three. We're gonna end it here with this particular video. We got special guests coming up next. Play. So let's break down what okay. Dave Chappelle said. First okay. of all, okay. he starts his monologue with a speech saying that he condemns anti-Semitism, right. but joking about it, not being serious. As if you make a monologue and then all of a sudden anything you say is gonna be okay, and everyone's no, laughing. no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah. remember, we're comedians. He's telling a joke, but it's Either, not funny. But to you. Yeah, but the problem is when, <laughs> is when the world laughs at anti-Semitism, which is a real thing, then they realize that it's not But, that but laughing, he wasn't laughing at anti First of all, Dave's not anti-Semitic. I didn't because, say he He couldn't be because Lauren Michaels runs SNL, and he's mm -hmm. Jewish. Yeah, and, that, and, doesn't, that doesn't matter. And he worked in an Israeli club. That still doesn't matter. That doesn't I think I think he's it could be or couldn't be. It's based on himself, not based on his surroundings or mm -hmm. where he lives. There's so people. he said, stop, this, stop, no, stop, stop. Let's not pull past that. He said, Dave can't be... Um, anti-Semitism or uh, anti-Semitic because he work at clubs and go on platforms that Jewish people own. He said it don't matter. Wait a minute. But it mattered in the NBA when they when the ADL put pressure on Adidas, 
on the Brooklyn Nets, on right. all these people, mm-hmm. and Kyrie Irving included, to make him apologize and to make all of these companies that were connected with him and Kanye West and the rest of these people disown them. Message. Drop them from their particular thing. So it does matter. Right. If if Amalek, if you're a Malachite and you're Jewish and you're proud of it, which they all are, and somebody come on and make slander against you or whatever, they don't really they ain't care about the money. They got money. They run this show. Right. So they ain't worried about the money. At that particular time, they're gonna shut you down. That's what they did with Adidas. They was willing to to break up their relationship with Adidas. One of the most powerful companies on the earth. They was willing to break up that friendship. Same thing with Kanye West, one of the most powerful entertainers on the earth as far as his music and his and his, and his fame. They was willing to cut ties with him completely, lose all that money just to do what? To hold their name true. So he lied. Adam Silver, who is the commissioner of the NBA, he Jewish. He came out against, against Kyrie Irving and said he was disappointed. Right. So it does matter. He lying because that's what they do. He was mad at Dave Chappelle for making a couple of jokes. You understand? Oh, it wasn't funny. Then Godfrey said, well, it wasn't funny to you, but a lot of people laughed at it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, this is the evil that we have to deal with. Now, give me that book, The Hebrew Heritage. Now, I want to show that. Let me show that. Let me show that, that quick video with, um, I just, I breast posted with Howard Stern. Now, there's some graphic language in this, but I'm going to show this video. It's with Howard Stern. And then what's the brother name that used to play? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think our caller is in, so we're going to go ahead and move on. We're going to go ahead and jump right into our call. Let's bring the call in, brothers. Hey, Shalom, Most High Christ bless you. Hey, Most High Christ bless. Shalom, Bishop. Okay? <laughs> you good, sir. How you doing, Bishop? I'm good. All praises. All praises. I'm at an undisclosed location. Hence the ugly curtain. That ain't my curtain. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All praise. Bishop, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good. All praises to the most high. I'm doing good. All, All praises. praises. All praise. Thank you for coming on Escaping the Plantation today. Hey, we wanted to, we was hoping to uh, do a couple, just ask you a couple questions about the, the, the climate today and what's going on. Um, the last couple weeks, well, baby, baby, basically the last month, there has been an uproar and quote-unquote anti-Semitism and the Israelites rising up to teach the truth about who we are. We've been doing that, but mm-hmm. when, when when the march at the Barclays Center and the display at the Barclays Center came about, it sent ripple effects throughout the earth. Can you talk about the mission that particular day and what it is we were out, to, out there to accomplish? Okay. Well, the mission that particular day uh, was in response to um, the way they treated our brother Kyrie and him saying, that he knows who he is and he knows that he's Semitic. So he has a right to say that according to, was it the First Amendment? Whatever. Yes, sir. But, um, you know, in basketball, these entertainment fields, they're like economic slaves. Mm-hmm. They're not allowed to say or do what they want to do unless you're Jerry Jones. Um, Dang. So the day we go out there to um, to march, uh, several school buses, or not, not school buses, they weren't school buses, I'll just say buses, professional, big professional buses came. You saw so-called Jewish people in all the buses looking out the window, mm. uh, opening the door. The doors talking about, oi vey, oi vey. Mm. The Schwarz, the Schwarz is a talk, a teaching, the Schwarz says, Schwarzer. You know, that means <laughs> niggas, right. black niggas. Uh, Schwarzer Dreck, the black shits, that's what they were calling us. Dang. So we got to yell back, Idomi Kalev, eat a mic, no. Idomi Kalev. Idomi that's Kalev. You. Your mams up, you know? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very successful, all praises to the Most High, because Kyrie would have had a very bad day had the Lord not sent Israel United in Christ there. All the so-called Jews would have surrounded the Barclays Center mm. and oyved their way into the minds of the people to condemn Kyrie Irving. That's what their attempt was. So, wow. So, the Most High moved the spirit of Israel United in Christ to go and intercede into that thing and teach the truth. That's a blessing right. from the Lord. So, after that, oh, so after that Bishop, you've seen um, a lot of people wanted to know who Israel United in Christ was. And all mm-hmm. praise to the Most High, you've been able to go on several platforms. Can you talk about some of the platforms you were able to go over to kind of to go on to kind of share the gospel of, of who we are and what we teach? Yes. Well, I, I went on um, Jason Whitlock, mm-hmm. Fearless, as well as uh, 
go back to Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, either of the hosts, we didn't agree 100%. However, uh, they did see some things. Uh, go back to Africa. The brother's name was uh, mm -hmm. Cu Cuffy, something like that. I, think so. I yes, can't so. remember. I apologize, but he's a nice brother. Um, all praise to the most high. Jason Whitlock, he's more of a Christian conservative, if you will. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the conservative stuff and all that. Right. I'm not too much into politics. But the gospel went out, and Jason Whitlock brought in a Christian right behind me to try to undo the teaching that came forth. Mm. Uh, what I thought was funny, uh, he asked me, he said, Jason Whitlock said, I was a disruptor. I said, all the prophets of God are disruptors. Right. If you're not a That's disruptor right. of the system, you're not a prophet, you're not a saint, you're not a follower of Christ at all. Because when you read Jeremiah 28, verse 8, it connects with Matthew 24, verse, it was at 9 and 10. Mm. Christ is saying the same thing Jeremiah said. And they were known as disruptors. So, oh, 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 today, Jason Whitlock calls them disruptors. So, okay. so, so, Bishop, the guy that came on was named um, Delano Square. Delano Squares. That was the brother name that came in after you. And then mm. there was another one, the two pastors actually that came in to try to discuss some of the things that you had brought out. And it was the, it was the, it was the basic Christian rhetoric. Is it was mm. what we always expect them to come with. But can you talk about how when this truth comes out? that now you have to do damage control. Because we've been seeing Esau do it, but now we see our own people doing the same thing. Yes. See, Esau, which Esau is the biblical name for the so-called Caucasian race. That's their father. Mm. Um, they don't want to be perceived as racist. So what they do is hire their, I'm trying to look in, dogs. That's the only way to, hey, can y'all get me that so y'all know yes, it's not coming from me? Isaiah 56. Give me that in Isaiah, please. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Get me that. Isaiah, Isaiah. Is it 54? I forgot. 56 and 10, I believe. 56. Yes, yes that yes, one sir. right there. Yes, 56, sir. 10, and 11, please. God, I, it's, I didn't use the terminology dog because I'm, I want to be rude purposely. No, 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 no. It's biblical. It's Bible. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 56 and verse 10. Read no. it out. His watchmen are blind. His, the his there is the white man. Mm. His watchmen, the watchmen are those who overlook, oversee what's going on. It says his watchmen are blind. Mm. Now they got physical eyes, but they are spiritually blind. Mm. Okay? They are all ignorant. Mm -hmm. They are all dumb dogs. You see that? The Bible says they're all ignorant. Ignorant to what? The laws of God, mm -hmm. the testimony mm -hmm. of God. It says they are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. Whoa! Ooh. That ain't me. That's God speaking right there. Right. Keep reading. They cannot bark. Meaning they can't prophesy. They can't warn the people of what's to come. I told them on, on Jason Whitlock's show, I said destruction is coming to the United States of America. Right. It is what it is. Revelation 18 tells you that. Read on. Sleeping. Sleeping. Lying down. Uh-huh. Loving to slumber. They love to slumber. Read. Yea, they are greedy dogs. The Bible says his watchmen, these he, these people are greedy dogs. Right. They're all about the money. You know, I just found out Jason Whitlock's net worth is $10 million. Mm. I was shocked. Damn. I was flabbergasted. That put a new light. For, Jason Whitlock kept saying, I'm not a slave. Right. I'm free. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're not. The jokes of iron are off our necks because we've been spiritually broken and destroyed right. here in America. Read on. Which can never have enough. They can never have enough. Come on. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They can't understand the word of God. Read. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. Mm. It's all about the money. Right. It's all about the money. Like I always say, the works that God has blessed us to do, we were able to do it with the poor people in the congregation right. and people that donate, which are poor people. Right. If you ever watch Shout Out Tuesday, people always say, this is all I can afford right now, but Lord's right. will, I'll make more. Sometimes it's $5, $10, but every penny counts, brothers and sisters. Right. Every penny counts. We don't buy Maseratis. Right. As many as you saw, we're building schools in Africa. Mm. I believe we got a foothold of, of like 10 schools right. in Africa. 
Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Get a line. Go ahead, Cap. Hey, so so Bishop, I wanted to ask you another question because you mentioned Jaylen, Jason Whitlock's um, comment. I re- I remember you you said he tweeted a tweet that said it was just a scripture. It was just Revelation two verse nine, and mm-hmm. he received immediate pushback. What was his response to you when you brought that up? <laughs> it seemed like he didn't really want to talk about it. Right. But I saw the show. I saw the episode. Mm-hmm. They, the, the comments, the Jewish committee, co- community attacked him, calling him an anti-Semite or racist, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And he was dumbfounded. He said, but all I did was post a scripture. Right. And that scripture was written in the Bible 2,000 years ago. Right. Jason Whitlock, no myself, wrote this book. Right. Okay. So, so would that prove? Because I remember you said, I yeah, know he said, um, he said that just because I got pushed back doesn't mean I'm not free. And you just said, okay. <laughs> I had to leave it alone. I, I had to leave it alone. You know, it's, uh, Roy. Right. You know the house Negroes, right. they ate better, they wore better clothes, they made a little cheddar. They always thought they were free. Right. But they were still under the so-called slave master's foot. Right, absolutely. So, Bishop, before we let you go today, there was something else he mentioned in the interview, and I wanted you to touch on it a little bit. I know you touched on it a little bit during the show, but you didn't have much time. He said it seems like you're aggressive towards America. He was like, you guys seem like you're so aggressive towards America. And we were trying to figure out, where does he get that from? Could you could mm-hmm. you kind of show the, the truth about what, you, what it is that you believe in regards to that? Well, re- what, what we want everybody to realize is that, of course, as many of you know, we are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, mm-hmm. Blacks, Latinos, Native American Indians. Our job is to wake the people up mm-hmm. and to warn the people. Right. And what else? God commands us to prophesy against great kingdoms and nations. Can we get that in Jeremiah yes, sir. 28 and 8, please? So we got to set the record straight, Bishop, because they keep trying to yes, paint sir. this narrative. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. We're going to set it straight right now. Come on. (laughs) Yes, sir. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Mm. So the prophets of old, that's what Jeremiah said, always prophesied against great countries and kingdoms of war, pestilence, and evil. Mm -hmm. Our job as the prophets of the Lord, the word prophet translated today is preacher. It's the same word. Preacher means to foretell. In other words, to prophesy. So don't Mm -hmm. get it twisted. It's the same thing. Now watch this. Isaiah 13 and 2, please. Yes, sir. You know, the book of Isaiah Chapter 13 and verse 2. Bring it out. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. The banner, the banner is the Holy Bible. Mm. The banner is the Holy Bible. Right. It says, God says, lift up that banner upon the high mountain. The highest mountain, meaning the highest government, is Babylon the Great, the United States of America. Mm. So we are commanded to prophesy the words of God in Babylon the Great, the United States of America. Read. Exalt the voice unto them. God God says, exalt your voice unto them. Lift up your voice. Go ahead. Shake the hand. When you shake the hand, you are correcting. You are rebuking. Go ahead. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. That people will get so mad, they will go into the gates of the nobles. The gates of the nobles is who? Your presidents, your congressmen, your governors, your mayors, Stop these Israelites. Stop these preachers. Stop these prophets from teaching the word of God. Go ahead. Verse 3, I have commanded my... That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. So that's what we are commanded to do. Now watch this. Listen good. I want everybody to listen. Why do you think they assassinated... I'm choosing my words. Why do you think they assassinated the Lord and Savior whom the world calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai? Why do you think that? Do you think they assassinated him? Because that's what it was. A public lynching is assassination. Right. Was it because he just, I love everyone. I just love you. No, that's not why. He was prophesying against great kingdoms, uh, countries, 
of evil, war, and pestilence. Give me that Matthew 24. Yes, sir. Give me that, please. Yes, Prove sir. my point. What Christ was preaching. Come on. What verse? Seven. Seven. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse... Bring it up. Seven. Seven. Verse seven. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. Mm. That's what Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 28, verse 8. Right. Now, understand this. These judgments are coming on Babylon, on Russia, on, on throughout Europe, because they have, they have enslaved God's people, and God's people are breaking God's commandments. Give me this real quick. Watch this. Watch this. Um, what do I want? Give me Matthew 19.16. Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. Bring it out. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he, sa and he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. You hear what the Savior said? Mm -hmm. If you want salvation, if you want eternal life, keep the commandments. Right. That's our message to our people, right. okay? In fact, everybody should be keeping the commandments. Right. As, for, as a matter of fact, right. everybody. But in that, teaching that, for our people, salvation comes. Right. Now, what goes along with that? War mm -hmm. is coming. Evil is coming. We've seen the pestilence back in, what, 2019, 2020? Right, yes, sir. We've been prophesying this for a while now, and it's coming to fruition. Mm. And it's going to get worse and worse. Okay, this is what I want our people to understand. You're not stopping it. And why haven't the churches mm. gone on their networks to explain uh, what anti-Semitic Semite right. is? Why haven't the churches cleared things up biblically? Because they don't know the Bible. Right. We're the guys. Israel united in Christ. We're the sons of God. That's We're, the right, right? We're the preachers. That's who we be. That's who we are. That's right. <laughs> All praises to the Most High Bishop. Hey, I'm glad you set the record straight because you know they try to twist our words and paint a false narrative. But you heard it from the bishop, the leader of Israel United in Christ. Of course, he's going to give all homage to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All praises to the Lord. That's, That's right. right. So oh, I wanted to say this. <laughs> yes, sir. I don't know if you got the video. They found this group of unknown persons who was on, I think they might have been, it's a, it's a tweet on Twitter mm -hmm. where they were saying they praised Hitler. I got it. We don't praise Hitler. Yeah. We right. praise the most high Yahweh. That's, That's right. we praise. Right. So they're trying to align these people with us. Right. We've never seen these guys. You know what I'm talking about, Cap? Yes, sir. I'm about to pull it up for you right now. I got it. Pull it up and please pray. Play yes. so people know. Yes, sir. There's a distinct difference between us and them. Yes, sir. We have, we've never seen them. We've never heard of them. Yes, sir. I got it. I'm putting it up to you. Hey, guys, brothers, pull it up right now. I'm putting the posting in the group. Because, Bishop, you're on fire right now. You're right. We got to separate ourselves from these people that say these crazy outlandish things. Like you exactly. always tell us, stay in the scriptures. Stay in the exactly. scriptures, stay brothers. The, they also said that Hitler didn't do anything to black people. That's not true. Right. Hitler killed about 15,000 black people who lived in Germany. Mm. Then Germany, just before World War II, committed genocide on New, in New, Numibia. Right. Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it. It's Numibia. New right. Genocide on our people. Mm. So why don't we praise him? Right. Can somebody show the video, please? Yes, sir. Play that video, brothers. Because why don't you feel good about that? Why don't I feel good about yeah. what Kanye is saying? Both of them and Kyrie. What they got going on? Well, I'll talk mainly about Kanye. I mean, right. What about Kanye? Why you don't feel good about what you're saying? Jewish and he's praising. You're half Jewish. Yes, and he's praising Hitler. Saying the Nazis are cool and saying the Holocaust didn't happen. Yeah, no, we support Hitler. Right. 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 All of you? Yeah. Right. You know, right. Because Hitler was killing your people, man. Hitler knew who the real Jews was. Ah! Right? Hitler wasn't oppressing my people. He was coming for your nuts. Holy right? And let me give and let me give you a wake-up call, man. You're not a Jew. You're not Jew, right? 
you're the, you're the seed of the devil, man. Right. right? These brothers are so on, 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 on these platforms, Kanye, Kyrie, shaking things up. It's because it's a great awakening happening. Right? right? The real Jews are back on the streets. Right. And these so-called fake Jews who stole our identity are going to go into slavery. Right? right? Because, you're not, you're, because you're not a Jew. Right? Did the Holocaust happen? It did happen, and we're and we glad that it happened. Did so, uh, right? but guess, oh, guess oh, what oh, happened God. as well? But guess what? Wow. That's it, bitch. So, right, we... We don't know who, the, who these brothers are. We've never seen them, mm. never heard of them. However, Hitler did oppress our people. Like I right. said, they killed 15,000 uh, soldiers amongst our people, and they committed genocide. Can you look up Numibia? N- yes, sir. N-U-M-I-B-I-A? I think that's how you spell it. I'm not sure. You know I, I'm not the greatest speller. Okay. Numibia, yes. is that it? Numibia. Numibia. I think that's it. Let me see. Numibia. Yep, Numibia is in Africa. Yes, sir. Numibia. Right. Can you go to Wikipedia? Yes, sir. Put in like uh, Germany's Germany in Numibia. What did they do? Germany uh, Holocaust in Numibia. Something like that. I don't know what to type, but something that gives a history on what happened. Yes, sir. Yep, Herero and Nama genocide in Numibia. Uh, I'm sending it to you now, brothers. A forgotten genocide where Germany did in Numibia. I'm sending it to you right now. Let's right. pull it up. And that shows me that a lot of brothers that's on the street, their elders or their teachers are not teaching them properly. Right. So I just pray, brothers, and sisters, watch our videos. We're going to help y'all. We're going to help y'all historically and most of all, biblically. Yes, sir. We're going to help you so that we don't be around sounding crazy on the street. <laughs> Never praise Hitler. Praise the Most High. Right. Okay. But I'll show you how I shy. How about that? Right. You like that? Right. That's the right. So yeah, so they so the New York Times is blocking this. So I got another one that I'm sending you guys, brothers, on Wikipedia, something that's simpler. The New York Times is blocking that one. They want us to pay. We ain't paying. We ain't All right, here, paying. We, <laughs> here we go. Here uh Herero and Namakai, genocide genocide. Pull that up. Her- the Herero? Yes, sir. The Herero and Herero Nam- and Namakwa. The Namakwa genocide or the Herero and Nama genocide was a campaign of ethnic extermination and collective punishment waged by the German Empire against the Herero or over Herero and the Nama in German Southwest Africa, now Namibia. Damn. It was the first genocide of the 20th century occurring between 1904 and 1908. Mm. Right. They killed hundreds of thousands of our people. Okay, that's what they did. Look, zoom in on that picture right there on the right, mm-hmm. on my right. Mm. A, Read that. A photograph of Chain Herrero and Nama prisoners during the genocide. Zoom in closer. Can y'all zoom in a little closer? Zoom in closer I want y'all to see what's on their necks. Mm. Yoke of iron. Damn. Yokes of iron, chains. Mm. And look at the German uh, guy on the right, mm. my far right. Mm hmm. These are Germany. Yes, they did oppress us. Right. The Germans did a lot of evil to us. So this is what we got. When we on the street, brothers, please learn a little more. Learn, please, so you don't sound half crazy. Please. <laughs> yes, sir. You know. Yes, sir. We love our people, but we got to sound a little better. We got to speak. Hey, find me that scripture in Ezekiel 3 or 2 where the Lord says, speak with my words. Yes, Give me sir. that. Ezekiel 3 and 4. Yes, sir. Yes. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 4. Bring it out. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. Mm. That's what we got to do. Speak with God's words right. to the people. This is why, like on many of the talk shows, they always say, I notice you always go to the Bible. I have to let the Bible speak for me. Right. The Bible is the primary source. Okay? Why? Because it was written thousand, th- three, over 3,000 years ago. Right. Okay. That's the primary source. Not these other books. Okay. But the Bible. Get down United 12. I know I'm taking a bit long. No, go ahead. Daniel 9 and 12, please. Go ahead. Bring it out. Out. <laughs> Daniel 9 and 12, brother. Yes, sir. The book of Daniel, chapter 9 and verse 12. Bring it out. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. Mm. For under the whole heaven have not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. So the Lord says, the evil that occurred to our people, 
our race, the 12 tribes, no nation can compare to the evil we suffered. Right. You can't compare six million, uh, six million, what are they called? Jewish people mm -hmm. uh, dying during the five year war of World War II. Was it, was it six years? Six or five years? Right. To the, let's just, let's just talk about the Middle Passage. The Middle Passage from Africa to America, over 100 million of our people died. Mm. How are you going to minimize 100 million and maximize 6 million? No, brothers, sisters, uh-uh. No. no. What's been done to us? Ours is the true Holocaust. Give me Lamentations 2.13. Yes, yes sir. sir. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2 and verse 13. Bring it out. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? You know when you, you catch in hell and somebody says, well, listen, you're not the only one going through this because brother A or sister B went through the same suffering as you. And that's kind of comforts you a little bit. But God says right here, listen, get rid of it again, get rid of it again, get rid of it again. Yes, sir. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? You can't compare nobody else's suffering to what we as a people, as a race, went through. Read on. What shall I equal to thee that I may comfort thee, O virgin? What nation can you compare to us to comfort us? Hey, uh, the Israelis went through the same thing black people. No, 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 no. You cannot compare six million dying during a five-year span to 100 million during the Middle Passage. You can't compare the two. We don't. Yes, sir. What shall I equal to thee that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea. Mm. Who can heal thee? Who can heal us? Only the Lord God of heaven and earth. Our people are scattered, destroyed, our language lost, our country gone. We lost our dignity, our identity, our heritage, our culture. We've lost our minds. Mm. We've lost everything. You cannot compare what we have suffered to anybody on the planet. Right. Okay. Absolutely. All praise. <laughs> excellent, excellent, Bishop. Thank you so much for coming on to Escaping the Plantation. This ain't your first time. You've been on here before, yes, but you always bring the fire, Bishop. We thank you for coming on and spending some time with us today. Thank you for having me, and I apologize about these ugly curtains back here. <laughs> it ain't mine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All praise. Yeah. Shalom, Bishop. Most high Christ, bless you, sir. Most high Christ, bless y'all. Love you. Shalom. 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 All praise. Hey, man, so you heard it from the general himself. Now, the reason I posed that question is because I like it when Bishop and the, and the other bishops and the deacons are able to disprove that narrative about any type of harm being trying to be done towards anybody. Mm -hmm. That's not our movement. Our movement is strictly biblical with the word of God. That's it. So I'll praise to the most high for the bishop coming on. The general. You understand? Yes, sir. Stop playing around. All right? So, hey, listen. We got about 11 minutes left in the show. So with these last 11 minutes, I want to show you the aftermath of what happened after Bishop went on his onslaught <coughs> spiritually. Lord have mercy. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Put the camera on this brother right here. You good? Don't roll with me. Yes, sir. Man, what you doing, man? Who raised you? Operation. Don't mess up our flow, man. You all right? Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> all praise. So, hey, listen. After Bishop went on his, he went on um, what was called Comedy Hype, mm -hmm. and they were very respectful. Yeah. Um, the host, not the host, the, I think it may have been the owner at the end. He had, You know, he had some questions for Bishop. He wasn't trying to really feel some of the things Bishop was saying, but we're grateful for the opportunity. I believe that video got almost 500,000 views yeah. in less than two weeks. It's amazing. Uh, Jason Whitlock's uh, show, um, the uh, oh man, I messed it up. I messed it up. The brother, that, the 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 one brother that Bishop. I, I'm not. I apologize. I'm not trying to be. Um, I'm not trying to speak evil of the brother or nothing like that by not knowing his name. And that's not saying that he's not important or his platform isn't important because he brought the Bishop on. That video had like almost a hundred thousand views too. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, on top of that, the aftermath of that is what I want to show real quick. So after the bishop went on his uh, his show with Jason Whitlock, you know the envy stroke up in many of these so-called Christians. They got angry. Many Israelites did too. 
but a lot of Christians as well. Now let's show this first one. Now we got it's not a video. I just want to show the the thumbnail. Now look at this. I screenshotted this because I wanted to kind of put this together. So right after the bishop got done with his interview, all right, um, viral. The video went viral. One of Jason Whitlock's best videos. Uh, we got this guy. I don't even know who this guy is. I you I see Bishop Nathaniel exposed by Jason Whitlock. How? How sway? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Ain't no way, boy. I'm just kind of reaching. Right, you reach. <laughs> right. All right, let's go to the next one. Watch this. My reaction to Jason Whitlock's interview. This, this dude don't have a lot of views, so it's not really about that. It's just the fact that people are watching. Mm -hmm. All publicity is good publicity. In this regard, brothers and sisters are being forced to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Now, whether they want to try to pick it apart and say uh, he bringing the scriptures out wrong, whatever they want to do, regardless... God's people being edified by this. Right, it's putting right. it's putting that purple and gold everywhere. The bishop and what he's doing through the spirit of Christ everywhere. You understand that? Go to the next one. Look at this. Prove blacks are not the Israelites. Me and this guy actually had a little bit of a back and forth. <laughs> and he kind of challenged me a little bit. I had to back away because I ain't going to accept no challenge on that level without leadership's approval. Right. But I wanted to go at his neck because mm. <laughs> he was talking about, uh, he, was, he pulled Romans 9 and was saying that that disproves that we the Israelites. Romans 9, nigga? Out of all, 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 all places, places you gonna go to, you gonna go to Romans nine. We will eat you alive in Romans nine in context <laughs> from verse one, bro. Right. But that's what he wanted to go to. I'm like, okay, you're obviously on drugs. So go back. So prove blacks are not the Israelites. So he took the bishop's face. He cut out the bishop's face. He cut out some of the brother's face, um, uh, in the black shirts and in, in the MOV shirts, and then. In the beginning of his video, he showed a about a five second clip of one of the captains reading uh, twelve tribe, twelve gates for the twelve tribes, and he cut it. And then he went into this this whole Romans nine and Romans eleven breakdown was completely horrible. It's the worst Romans nine and Romans eleven breakdown I ever seen in my life. I literally fell asleep twelve times in seven minutes. It was horrible. So, but I'm just showing you the aftermath of what happened at the Barclays Center. And then now the press, people want to know who is Israel United in Christ. Right. What were you guys doing? It's a, there's an uproar, okay? Now watch this. Keep reading. I'll go to the next one. Excuse me. This one right here. This guy, 117 views. Okay, he, nobody watches his page. But I'm just showing you that this is what it's doing, all right? These fake Hebrews are crazy as F. This is what he's saying. But, a, but over 100,000 people seen it. Go to the next one. Look at that. Uh, of course, your boy. Uh, this is BK the apologist. Now he loved Vocab Malone. He's one of his minions. All right, or one of the riser rights. I should have added him. He one of the riser rights. That woman in the middle is too, uh, and that guy MJ. They just all coons, man. All right, and they not getting a lot of views, but it's the fact they keep putting it out there. Yeah. People are going to start to say, "Y'all always talking about them. Mm -hmm. Y'all always talking about them. Mm -hmm. There must be some truth to what they're doing." Go to the next one. Look at that. This one right here got 1.1 1 .1 thousand. Like I said, it's not a lot of views, but the conversation is striking up. Christian pastor respond to black Hebrew Israelite leader. All right? It's still, it's still out there. People are seeing it. They're hearing it. Right? Go to the next one. This one right here. Video review. That's Officer Matthew. Shout out to IUIC New Orleans. Captain Shim. Uh, Officer Matthew. Uh, Officer Micah. And a few other, other brothers went to uh, sit down with this pastor and demolished him in the scriptures. I mean, destroyed him in the scriptures. And then these Christian pastors, these apologists, are now taking these videos and dissecting it. Look how long that video is. Three hours. Three hours and 11 minutes of watching us teach. Think about that for a minute, of trying to break down and analyze what we're doing. Go to the next one. Same thing as that same guy, the BK the apologist. Go to the next one. There was another one I had of a small clip of a video where that pastor was trying to um, speak against, he was trying to speak against the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Now, these folks have been using the Zondervan Bible Dictionary forever. Right. But when we start using the Zondervan, now all of a sudden, you got to discredit it. Nobody had a problem with Rudolph R. Windsor's book from Babylon to Timbuktu. And so we started using it to go, to go aside with the scriptures, now all of a sudden, oh, we have to discredit Rudolph R. Windsor. Well, if you discredit Rudolph R. Windsor, this? you have to discredit his sources. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Where did he get the so- Where did he get these uh, these sources from? So now you're going to discredit him too. Now I'm telling you, now, this is not the this is not the video. There's a video. I got a few minutes. There's a video of a pastor that 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 a Christian apologist pastor. I posted it in the group. It's supposed to be number eleven. It was number 11. Yep, that's it right there. So this is the video of Captain Amaziah, Captain Aria, and Captain Ereal, and I believe Officer um, Carmilla. I think Officer Carmilla was there reading. No, Officer Soraya. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's my brother. Officer Soraya. They were uh, at a uh, sit-down with some pastors. So now this Christian uh, apologist is now analyzing that. All right? So let's go to it. Yes. They don't have a culture. Or anything. So the Hamites are really Caucasians. What? Uh, that's in their theory. That's why they said huh? that the Hamites, not the Negroes. Not you, sir, Captain Amaziah. They talking about you. That's this is not an affirmation of any kind. This is this is degradation. Stop. Not affirmation. So he's saying that the people that ma- that wrote the Zonovan Bible Dictionary, the scholars that put together the Zonovan Bible Dictionary, when they put in there Ham, the, the, the youngest son of Noah, became the father of the dark races, but not the Negroes, it says in there he became the progenitor of the dark, dark races. races. <laughs> <laughs> but he, in his mind, I'm telling you, they be so hell-bent on proving us wrong that they don't even see the fallacies in the things that they're saying. Right, give me that real quick in Sirach where it says uh, the, the the talk of a fool is like talk without sense. I think it's chapter 21, 21. around 18 or 19 maybe. Sir. This is how you pastors look, trying to go deep into the Zondervan and go deep into the scriptures. You don't understand, Paul. You don't understand the scriptures. Read that for me. Yes, sir. The book of Sirach, chapter 21 and verse 18. Read it. As is a house that is destroyed. So is wisdom to a fool. Go ahead. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. You're not making any sense. The things you're saying doesn't make sense. It doesn't line up with what the scripture said. Now, he got a problem with Captain Amaziah and the brothers using the Zondervan Bible Dictionary as just another basis to show that the Hamites are different from the Israelites. He said, this is not an affirmation. This is, I think he said degradation. Is that yes, what he sir. said? Yes, sir. Go to the Bible. Go to Exodus 11 and 7. Yes, sir. Exodus 11 and 7 says the same thing as the Zondervan. Could you read it? Yes, sir. This is the, the book of Exodus chapter 11 and verse 7. Read it up. But against any of the children of Israel. Go ahead. Shall not a dog move his tongue. Read. Against man or beast. Against man or beast. That ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. The Lord always put a difference between the Hamites and the Israelites. But the Hamites and the Israelites, we read it earlier in Genesis 50, look the same. When the when when um, Raguel's daughters, mm-hmm. the prince of uh, the priest of Midian, mm-hmm. when his daughters saw Moses, they said an Egyptian helped us. When Paul Acts twenty one thirty seven, yes sir. When Paul was uh, brought to be to the to the palace, let's read. Let's read that. Let's see what it says about yes, our sir. forefather Paul. The hey, book we'll, of we'll Acts, close it out here. Yes, sir. The book of Acts, chapter twenty-one and verse thirty-seven. Read and it. as Paul was to be led into the castle, uh-huh. he said unto the chief captain, read. "May I speak unto thee?" Go ahead. Who said, "Canst thou speak Greek?" Read. Art not thou that Egyptian? So he thought Paul was an Egyptian, meaning Paul had to be two things. He had to be dark skinned and he had to be tall and slender, because the Egyptians were always known to be what. Tall, slender people. So Paul couldn't have been short and stubby, stubble, whatever, stubby, <laughs> fat. You understand? Chubby, a uh, lard ass, as um, as Captain Shin would say. <laughs> Go ahead. Are not thou that Egyptian? They which, thought he, they thought Paul was an Egyptian. Go ahead. Which before these days made us an uproar uh-huh. and led us out into the wilderness. Four thousand men that were murderers. Read. But Paul said. I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus. Go ahead. A city in Cilicia. Cilicia. Mm-hmm. A citizen of no mean city. Go ahead. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto thee, so, unto the people. So Paul said, no, I'm not an Egyptian. I'm not a Hamite. I'm a Jew. There was a difference between the Jews and the Hamites, even though the Jews were dark-skinned 
like the Hamites. And the Jews are dark-skinned and various different shades of brown and various different colors today because of colonization and, uh, uh, you know, mixing amongst the races. But they're still Israelites by blood if their father is, is, is in the descendant of an Israelite. So to close it out, go to Acts chapter 4. So the title of today's show was The Jewish People Want to Replace Us while black Christians want to erase us. Let me show you that that combination of those two people was also in the scriptures. Could you read that for me? Acts chapter 4, verse 25. The book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 25. Read it out. Who by the mouth of thy servant David hath said. Uh Uh-huh. Why did the heathen rage? Why do the other nations rage? Why are they angry? Go ahead. And the people imagine vain things. And the people, meaning the Israelites, imagine vain things. Go ahead. The kings of the earth stood up, uh-huh. and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord. Against the Lord. And against his Christ. So they're against God, and they're against the Son of God. Go ahead. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, Read. whom thou hast anointed, both Herod. Herod, who was an Idumean. And who Pont- was an Amalekite. Go ahead. And Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate was the Roman government. Go ahead. With the Gentiles. The Gentiles is the rest of the nations. Go ahead. And the people of Israel. And Israelites. But not calling themselves Israelites. But in today's time, they call themselves black Christians. Message. Christianity is what they are following today. But the Bible says they're against the Lord and his holy child, Jesus. Go ahead. We're gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determine before to be done. So when, when, when we bring it up about them wanting to replace us and then the black Christian wants to erase us, you may say, brother, that said Christ. That ain't talking about y'all. Could you give me that real quick in John 15 and verse 13? Yes, sir. What did Christ say about his disciples and his apostles that came after him? What did he warn them of to come? Read that for me. The book of John. Chapter 15 and verse 13. Bring it out. Greater love have no man than this. That you, know man- I want. you know what I want. The, the, uh, you going to be hate the world, hate the world, hate you. Uh, verse uh, 15. 15. Yes, sir. No, verse, verse uh, 16. Verse 16. Ye have not chosen me. No, 18, excuse me. Yes, sir. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Go ahead. If you were of the world. If we was out here uh, banging tambourines. You understand? And at the Christmas dinner, they love us. Go ahead. The world would love his own. Go ahead. But because you are not of the world. But because you stand boldly for the word of God, because you stand boldly on the street corners and teach the Bible with a microphone, yelling at the top of your lungs to get your people to repent, marching in the streets, circling the Barclays Center. Because you do that, because you not of the world. Go ahead. But I have chosen you out of the world. Go ahead. Therefore, the world hated you. And therefore, the world hated you. Go ahead. Remember the word that I said unto you. Go ahead. The servant is not greater than the Lord. Go ahead. If they have his Lord, then his Lord. Excuse me. The servant is not greater. Oh, you'll say his Lord? Okay. The the servant is not greater than his Lord. Go ahead. If they have persecuted me. If they persecuted me. They will also persecute you. Go ahead. If they have kept my saying, they will they will keep yours also. So if they had kept Christ saying, what is Christ telling you? The spirit in our brothers and sisters that reject this truth, that hate this truth, is the same spirit that was during the time that the, the disciples and Christ were teaching and they were rejecting their words. It's the same spirit back on the earth today. He's telling you, if they, re- if they persecute you and they deny your words and they come against you and what you're teaching, guess what? They also deny me. And Christ is the comforter. So when we speak Christ, that's him speaking the word of God through us. If you deny that, it ain't just us. You're denying Christ, which means you deny the Father. That's why we named the class today or the show today. The Jews want to replace us. Jewish people want to replace us. Black Christians want to erase us. They want to persecute us. We couldn't get deep into it. First and foremost, we want to thank the bishop for coming on. I'll praise to the Most High for the bishop coming on and, uh, you know, enlightening us all, giving us, giving us uh, more and more ammo against the wiles of the devil. Uh, also, uh, y'all had anything else y'all wanted to bring out on there before we close out? We'll go ahead and close out for the day. Uh, I did want to give a shout out real quick to the IT team. Officer Malachi, Soldier Alicia, Soldier Matthew, uh, Soldier Jeremiah's down there. I didn't see him. Soldier Jeremiah's, Soldier Isaiah, the brothers that are at camp right now. We're in 30 days of camp. The brothers out there grinding. All the prophets worldwide that's putting in work all across the four corners. Want to give a shout out to you brothers 
and you sisters that's putting in work for the Lord. Uh, pull up our credentials real quick. To help our people escape the plantation, you can send donations to P.O. Box 13602, uh -huh. Jackson, Mississippi, uh -huh. or via PayPal at IUIC.JacksonMS at IsraelUnite.org. Okay, all praises. So, brothers and sisters, thank you for your donations. Thank you for helping us out. You've done a great deal to us, and hey, it's helped, it's helped the congregation, and it's also helped the Escaping the Plantation show overall. As you see, we got three camera angles. Yeah. We can hit you from either side. I'll pray. The most high. <laughs> so I'll pray to the most high for that. Um, with that being said, brothers, y'all got anything else? All right. So that's another edition of Escaping the Plantation 2.0. Flawless victory.